Hello, everybody, and welcome to the war room. Um, hello, welcome to the war room. Uh, Dan Hardy here with uh, with the most host with the most, and um, today we are going to be breaking down uh, what might be one of the most impeccable fights that we've ever seen. So, Gerald Mirshot, um and <laughs> Barbarina, what is going on, everybody? Uh, today we are going to be breaking down Jared Mirshot versus Barbarina. <clears throat> what is up? What is up, guys? You know, listen, listen, I know I'm late. I know I'm late, but I've been warning you guys that um that I have been moving. And so I'm late for a good cause. I'm late for a good cause. All right. I've been stressed about moving, figuring out where I'm gonna go. And I've been editing a video as well today. So uh I have not just been fucking around doing nothing, all right? But anyway, it's time to tune in for this fight night. We have Tai Tuivasa and Big Tubby Marcin Tabora. I am predicting Tai Tuivasa by first round KO, but more importantly, we have Gerald Mearshart, the greatest middleweight of all time, taking on Barbarina. This is a little bit of a layup for Gerald Mearshart, I'm not gonna lie. I am a little bit surprised. I'm a little bit surprised that they gave Gerald Mirshard such an easy title defense. But championship fight, who's going to complain? I'm not going to complain. I am a little bit nervous because, again, it's, it's you never know with these guys like Barbarina who got nothing to lose. These tend to be the moments where everyone is, by and large, choosing the GOAT Gerald Mirshard to win. These are the, the moments where actually the upsets happen. So crossing my fingers, dotting my eyes. If Mirshard gets this one done, then... I mean, I, you, you may have to start talking about him as being maybe the go to the sport. He's already the middleweight goat, but we'll see. Thank you for the 20 NOK. Baldo is back. All right. Jose Aldo. I, I saw that right before I, I came down. Now, it's not official. Big Marcel hasn't posted it, but I love the fight. I love the fact that he's on 301. I do think that 30, 301 is a good card. I'm going to just say that. It's a great card. Thank you for the $2, Pat Matthews. Do they make that jacket in men's sizes? This is not a jacket, dude. This is uh, just a regular shirt. And um, thank you so much for the 79 cents, Charlie. I appreciate that. But let's get into this fight. This is too good to pass up on. Uh, I appreciate this, guys. Let's get on to it. Thank you for the $5, Crusoe. How does Mearshart versus Barbarina change the landscape of the middleweight division? Well, if Barbarina gets this one done, then we have a new Michael Bisping S champion. Jeremy Shark defends. Everyone's expecting him to defend the belt. So I don't really think it changes much. But of course, someone had to step in on short notice. You needed to have someone in there with him. So it is what it is. It'll be a highlight showcase for Gerald Mearshart. Here we go. Gerald stalking him down. Up against the fence. Oh, you don't want to do that in front of GM3. You don't want to do that in front of GM3. Oh, you don't want to miss that big in front of GM3. Did you see Moises? I did not watch the fight, but I saw that he won. And I saw that he's talking shit about Dan Hooker, which is crazy. He's like, how does Dan Hooker have a ranking spot? Well, because he beat Jalen Turner, a better fighter than you've ever beat. JM3 is putting the pressure on him right now. A little bit slow, a little bit sluggish, but that's GM3 for you. He's, he's old. He's not in his prime anymore. But look at this. Look at the pressure. Look at, he's already got Barber. Oh, you don't want to let him get his hands on you. Good, big, thudding shot from GM3. Dude, please stop spamming in the chat. Did you see Tony Tompkins is thinking about coming back at a retirement after seeing? I did. I did see that. I'm not a fan of it. I think it's a mistake for Mike Tyson to come back. I do actually think that the Tyson and Jake Paul fight will be a bit of an exhibition, body shots only type of matchup. GM3 shoots! Is he going to get the takedown? Yes, he gets the takedown. Nice. GM3 gets the takedown. You don't want to be here with GM3. GM3 is top five in the UFC history when it comes to submissions. Oh, oh. This is not where Barbarina needs to be. His only chance is a first round KO. Barbarina needs a first round KO. He's had a short notice fight, taken on the champion. He's put in a bad position. GM3 is climbing 
He's looking to take that back. This is the worst place you want to be with Gerald. And Brian Barberino, you could see he's out of shape. Look at that tubby stomach. Oh, man. I mean, this is easy work. This is what the goat does. Goat lets him up. <laughs> the goat lets him up to his feet. That was, a, that was a crafty move from GM3. Just just showing him. Just letting him know. Just letting him know. I got the strength advantage. I could take you down. Not really. He could have gotten the submission. I guess he just wants to play with his food. Nice rolling with that punch from GM3. Oh! oh Dude, no way. GM3's on the ground. That's crazy. Thought you muzzed yourself. Good luck with the movie, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. Guys, expect a, a new setup this week, at least something in the meantime. Maybe not a long-term new setup, but something relatively new. If this Barbarina, if this Barbarina KOs Gerald Mearshart, is this a Weidman Silva upsart? Well, yeah. Gem3 has not lost in decades. So, yes, obviously. The last time he lost was in 1FC when he made his debut. That was it. Dude, please stop spamming in the chat. Thank you for the $2, Secure J. If this Barbarina KOs, yep. Thank you for the $5, Charlie Reg. GM3 has him down. Oh, big shots. And now he's just he's just toying with him at this point. Looks like another title defense for GM3. I mean, what do you expect? I, UFC should have never made this matchup, honestly. What do you expect? Old man Barbarina stepping in to fight the champ? This is dangerous. I think he's going to get him out of there in the first. Oh, he's going to get him out of there in the first. As he should. As he should. Literally. You cannot be the GOAT and let Barbarina pass the first round. You need to tap him out. If he survives this, that's going to be a bad look on GM3. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, that's getting tight. Oh, he's wrenching on that arm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is mean. Oh, oh, you don't want to, oh, you don't want to let GM3 get your neck. He's going to tap him out like Jones did gone. He's going to tap him out like Jones did gone. Aldo is back, I know. Oh, it's not, you don't want to be here with GM. You don't want to be, he's got a gnarly, oh, big shots. Woo-hoo-hoo! He's styling, oh, he got out of the way of that. He's styling on him, he hit him with a counter shot. No way. He's in the matrix right now. Woohoo! Dude, I know that people are going to be complaining because he didn't finish him in the first, but he that was about as dominant as a first round can get. That was about as dominant as a first round can get. He is looking like the GOAT. Seen enough, given to John Jones. Well, different weight classes, middleweight. He's not going to move up to heavyweight, but he, he's there with Jones, resume-wise. He's there with Jones. I'll maybe say that's a, a, a solid – it's not a 10-8. It's a solid 10-9. It, it, it's the most dominant 10-9 a 10-9 can get. By the way, let me just say this about Jose Aldo. I am going to be picking Jonathan Martinez, and I think you guys should too. Jose Aldo is not the same leg kicker that he used to be back in the day. He doesn't have crazy high output. And unless he shoots takedowns, he's either going to have to KO Jonathan early, or he's just going to be taking leg kicks, and you just can't take leg kicks from Jonathan Martinez. Unless Aldo comes back with a vengeance to get a bunch of low kicks, Unless he comes back and he, and he knows that the guy he's fighting is the best kicker in the game and he goes at him and, and tries to test him where he's at, at his strongest, he's going to get crushed. I'm going to pick Jonathan Martinez by KO. I am going to go with Martinez. Inactive Aldo, been out of the cage for over a year, doesn't throw that many leg kicks, not super high output. Jonathan Martinez is going to be sitting right in front of him, checking his, like, just throwing tons of low kicks his way. People have tried to throw low kicks against Martinez, or people have tried to check low kicks against him too. He's never really been affected by people checking them. I mean, Jonathan Martinez was getting a lot of his kicks checked against, uh, what's his name, Cub Swanson and Adrian Yanez, and it didn't matter. Some guys, it literally doesn't matter if you check the kick. Have you ever trained it? If so, what? I have. I have done a couple years of kickboxing and judo in the background a little bit when I was a much younger kid. But right now, I just do shadow boxing in my house, a little bit of boxing. So right now, it's just boxing. I do I do, do boxing on the daily basis. I, th I throw a couple of punches in my kitchen every single day when I'm making a, a snack. Anyway, GM3, 
Oh, big body kick. You don't want to take a big body. Oh, you know, he went like this. Barbarino went like this, but you know it's uncomfortable when you go like that. This is getting ugly. This is getting very ugly. Thank you for the 20 and okay. Congrats, Aldo. Aldo ain't getting it done. I just don't understand why the UFC would select Barbarina for a title fight when he's this out of shape. Oh, look at that jab. Oh, that's a crafty jab from GM3. Barbarina's trying to do his best work. This, oh, you just can't deal with it. You just can't deal with the jab of Gerald. Oh, slip right hand. Damn, but he gets him down with a perfect takedown. Yo, I'm actually not even joking right now. I'm literally not even joking. All jokes aside, Gerald Mearshart actually is looking phenomenal tonight. Like, he's looking really good. He's in the zone. He's slipping punches, slipping, dipping, ripping, getting effortless takedowns, dominating on the ground, submission attempts. Like, this is actually an incredibly poised performance from Gerald Mearshart, all jokes aside. It doesn't matter if he does a knee shield. He's grappling with Gerald, man. Gerald Mearshart beating Barbarina is the average Anderson Silva win. Literally. This is the average Anderson Silva win. I'm not even joking. You're right. Anderson Silva couldn't even be this dominant against a freaking slugger and brawler like Barbarina. Barbarina was the type of opponent Anderson was taking on back in the day. I'm not even joking. Maybe not this version of Barbarina, maybe a slightly in better shape Barbarina, but there is some truth to that. Oh no, you, you just don't want to get put here by Gerald. This is a dominant performance. Straight dominance from Gerald. He's looking for another, oh, he's got the back. No, he's got two minutes on the clock. It's over, it's over. You're, you're not going to be able to survive. Gerald's jujitsu is top notch. There's a reason Hamzat was afraid to go to the ground with him. And, and Gerald still pulled it off by a KO, which is crazy. Yeah, he's neck cranking him right now. He's just taking the steam out of him. This is a Habib-like performance. Robbed by Hamzat? He technically, well, he won. He knocked him out in the first round. So I don't know what you mean by that. Hamzat did lose that fight. If Aldo wins, he's right up there with Jones. No, dude. A win over Jonathan Martinez does not put you up there with Jones. But if Aldo does win, he might... Pa you know what? You know what I'll say? If Aldo beats Jonathan Martinez, we may have to start talking about him being one spot higher than Habib and Volk. I might even consider putting him higher than Volk. That's a really solid win. As an old man, I might have to, I might have to put him over Volk until Volk gets another win. Not even joking. Oh! Oh, he's going to go out. He's tapping. He's going to go out. No, he's tucking his chin. Oh. Oh, Joe. Oh. <laughs> Yo. Oh, damn. That's cold. That's cold, man. Damn, man. Gerald Mearshart is cold, dude. That's crazy. Someone's got to do a meet. Oh. He's literally, oh, he froze him up. Dude, only a goat can do that, man. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Ten title defenses for Gerald Mearshart in at the middleweight level. This is insane. <laughs> Holy fuck. Holy shit. You could talk about short notice all you want. You could say Barbarina wasn't his original opponent. It was supposed to be Drickus. But my goodness. It doesn't matter. As long as you finish someone that dominantly, you could not ask for a better performance from Gerald Mearshart. You got, you got to put him up there. You got to start talking about him as passing Jones with that. That is insane. That actually, like all jokes aside, that's an amazing performance. Dominance, even on the feet. He literally, Gerald Mearshart literally put on a masterclass. I'm not even joking. That was actually a masterclass. Like we're not even bullshitting. I don't care if, we're just joking around about him being the GOAT. Like, that was actually a crazy good performance. That might literally be one of the best performances of the entire year, just clean-wise. Like, just well-rounded. He was slipping shots. He was imposing his will with the slow, ugly man's jab. He was shooting perfect takedowns and perfect timing. He was countering off the center line with freaking nice, gnarly right hands. And he got the choke. And he got control. 
I think that's got to be S tier performance for my performance tier list at the end of the year. Yeah, he had that ugly man's jab established too, that big, ugly, slow man's jab where someone like me, that shit ain't going to work on me because I'm too fast. But against these older sluggers, it does work. I, I, I do imagine Gerald Mearshart would probably have to switch the game plan on me because if it's against me, I got a fucking pip, pip, you know, a, a pepper jab that I'm sticking in your face, but it's got some sting on it. There's no way you could do that. Low key, I'd probably outbox him if he tries to fight me like that. Cause you know, he's a little bit too slow, but it's all good. It's all good. He would probably take me down. He's still the goat. He's still the goat. But you can't be you can't be throwing that slow against me, dude. I'll fucking crack you with a with a sticky jab. I see my jab is I have I have a what would you even call it? What would you even call it? I have the freaking quick twitch bundle of energy. I have the dense quick twitch jab where you get hit by it and you kind of start thinking, wait a second, I, I can't get close to this guy. I just can't get close. Jam three with a crafty bed performance. Nice, dude. Gerald Mearshart with a crafty performance about to get on there with his freaking Midwest accent. L let's listen to the energy. Let's see what Bisbing asks him. Yeah. just greatness I, I might honestly shed a tear that was a beautiful performance beautiful performance but l let's just talk about my skill set and i do believe aldo is going to lose to jonathan martinez i'm actually going to predict a leg kick tko i'm not even joking unless aldo tries to shoot takedowns which he could i actually might predict the leg kick tko because aldo is a, a very stationary Muay Thai heavy style and he's just going to be right there to get kicked and I don't think it matters if you check the kicks of Jonathan Martinez he's going to either have to KO Martinez which he could which he could or he's probably going to have to grapple and I just don't think he's going to KO Martinez early the Aldo fight is not official it's not absolutely official by the way I guarantee you they won't do a press conference in Brazil. Why do they never do press conferences in Brazil? Have you noticed that? Never. Are they worried that the fans are going to... I mean, they did some back in the day. The last two Brazil cards that we've had, Glover, Jamal, and then the one that we had last year as well. I forget what was the main... Oh, wait, no. Was that the last Brazil card? Obviously, that was the last pay-per-view. They didn't do a press conference for that, which is kind of interesting. Paulo. Someone Paulo. Never forget Jonathan, Rob, Saeed. I did think Saeed won that fight, but when I watched it back, I, I, I don't think it was a robbery. I, I honestly do think Jonathan may have won. Crafty GM3 performance makes Brian move and miss, gas out, crafty takedowns and a back take. Honestly, an amazing performance. Perfect. He was establishing his jab. He was moving forward, putting pressure on him. He was getting out of the way of shots and countering too. There was nothing more he could have done in that fight to look better. I think he even landed some kicks. That was a masterful MMA old man performance from Gerald Mirashart. Masterful. And, and, he, and, and those jabs were ugly. Those were ugly jabs. Very ugly, slow, tortoise-like. But he made it work because that's just the craft. That's just the skill. Brazil has been the worst attendance ever. Yeah, true. They, they are uh, a rough crowd. Very stuck-up crowd. How's GM3 a BJJ? How's Gerald Mearshart's BJJ against everyone at middleweight? I think it would prevail. I think it would do all right. I mean, it, it depends on who he's fighting. If he's up against a, a big, strong, explosive guy like Joe Pfeiffer, I mean, I honestly think he would frustrate Joe Pfeiffer, but Joe Pfeiffer could just have big blast double leg takedowns and he can kind of just weigh on him a little bit. There's some other guys Hamzat might be able to cut through him. I think Gerald's just a little bit slow on the ground, you know? He's a little bit slow. But against these old heads, it works. L Gerald's honestly one of the best. How Wait, we honestly have to look at where he's at all time, submissions wise. Gerald uh, UFC records. UFC record. Record book. I think he's top five, and he may have just put himself even higher than that, because he's tied with a bunch of other guys. He is tied with a bunch of other people. All right. I don't understand what's going on, but for whatever reason, 
he did destroy Pfeiffer and he did destroy um, Hamza Chemaev. Anyway, let's look at the submissions. Wow. Gerald Mirshart is now tied at number four with Nate Diaz. He was at number five on his own with nine submissions, 10 submissions. There's only three more. There's only three people to have more submissions than Gerald Mirshart. That's Damian Maya, Jim Miller, and Charles Oliveira. That's crazy. He is actually one of the most dangerous fighters on the ground. That's nuts. I honestly don't think Hamzat will have that many submissions when it's all said and done. Uh, Cal will get fraud checked by GM3. I mean, obviously, Gerald Mirshart just had 10 title defenses. You think he's going to ever fight Cal Barajo? He's never making it to the belt. Uh, Pantoja versus Ursaig main event for the pay-per-view. Brother, ew! Brother, brother, ew! I can't do that guy's voice, but... <laughs> brother, ew! I can't do it. I can't do it. I I've seen that video. That is pretty hysterical. Kahoot time? What do you guys mean, Kahoot time? Um, yeah, if this vibranium room set up, yeah. But guys, um, what was I going to say? I have been putting together a classic video, an absolute classic. So be on the lookout for my video tomorrow. Kahoot? Why would I do Kahoot? We're about to see a tough cookie fight. What are you talking about? Because it's women's MMA? You mean watching a bad to the bone fight, two badasses getting in the cage? Are you some kind of a sexist dude? I don't know. I'm just kind of grossed out by the fact that you guys are even making jokes about doing Kahoot during an actually really good fight. I don't know. It's just kind of gross. I don't know. Go to MMA Guru's chat if you guys want that nonsense, man. I'm going to tune into this tough cookie fight. Macy Chisone. This is pretty sick. Kazano. Pretty awesome. Dope fight. I don't know, dude. Maybe I honestly cry when I think of Macy Chazone fighting just because of how inspirational she is. She's such a tough cookie. If I had a daughter, I, I mean, just the fact that she exists in a world where I could have a daughter to grow up to look up to her might honestly make you shed a tear. I, I don't know. Such tough cookies, man. Such tough cookies. <laughs> oh, oh shit do you see that highlight do you see that highlight beth kahaya just turning her face <laughs> that was the epitome of women's mma i can't even keep the fucking joke going that is such a joke that that happened in women's mma dude fuck this fight screw this what do you think about all those return to 301 my first reaction is I cannot wait to see Aldo again, and it's super badass that he's fighting, and I absolutely love it. It's not confirmed 100%. But then when you actually think about the matchup, I think we're about to see Aldo get leg kicked TKO'd. I know that sounds crazy because Aldo's known for his kicks, but he's kind of low output. He doesn't throw a lot of kicks that much anymore. And for Jonathan Martinez, he's like Aldo is literally fighting the most dangerous leg kicker in all of MMA. Guys like Alex Pajeda, Jan Blahovic, do not have a single leg kick TKO in the UFC. Jonathan Martinez in his late 20s, where he has maybe six, seven, eight years left on his career, is tied for the record of most leg kick TKOs in UFC history. Aldo, unless he shoots takedowns or knocks him out early, I think he's going to get leg, leg kick TKO'd. So unfortunately, I, I do think he's going to lose. But... If he does win, then we're going to have to talk about him being top five all time again. A lot of casuals say all those top five. I, I personally have Volk over him and Habib. But I'm going to put Aldo, you know what? I might actually put Aldo in front of Volk if he wins against Jonathan Martinez. Even though it's not a title shot type of win, it's a win over a really solid bantamweight contender. And that counts towards the GOAT list. Now, does beating Jonathan Martinez do him do anything for him when it comes to the featherweight goat status nothing at all him beating jonathan martinez does not surpass volk on featherweight goat status but it might actually put aldo over volk all time with a win over jonathan martinez i'm actually being serious volk and aldo were close all time listen if it was just about aldo's whole career and we wasn't a divisional thing aldo would be a lot closer to volk he's not close to volk as feather as far as featherweight goat status goes but in regular goat status bantamweight wins count and aldo has four bantamweight wins i count the marlon Marais fight as a win because that was a robbery this would be his fifth 
ranked bantamweight contender that he's beat, I'd honestly put him above Volk. I'm not even joking right now. And I see left lane in the chat. Thank you for the 99 cents, Joshua Amato. Left lane, I saw your, your video. I, I, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I saw your video today. And there was a dude in your fucking Q&A section of the vid that basically said, dude, I can't stand these people switching up on Benoit. Him, <laughs> him, Lucas. Like, what? If this motherfucker is watching right now, this guy is literally just making shit up. I have never once, like, I've done the exact opposite, bro. I've literally done the exact opposite. I'm the one that's fucking holding down the Benoit Fort right now, dude. This guy is some dude in your Q&A who's like, Lucas has been shitting on Benoit. You know, like, he's he's switched up. It's like, bro, I've done the opposite. But that's a, it was a good video. I, I like the video. And I 100% agree on the Umar Nurmagomedov stuff. It is honestly a disgrace. But... I still have some hope that because O'Malley is the UFC's clout cow, that they'll protect him a little bit from Umar. But I, I just really hope that they don't give Umar one fight and try to, you know, basically excuse the fact that he's fighting in a number one contender's fight undeserved by just saying he's number 10, he's number 10, when he has not earned it at all, at all. I think that's one thing that the UFC has to stop doing. They have to stop rushing these contenders too much. We need to build them up and give them impressive win streaks. Habib, when he fought for the title, had a really impressive win streak. He had to beat Barboza, RDA, Michael Johnson. He had to beat a bunch of guys. Right? Charles Oliveira had to run through, well, I mean, at least he had to run through Tony. But Tony was a, a number one contender at the time. And Kevin Lee was top 10. But these days, it's like you, you fight a bunch of bums, then you get a number one contenders fight against a good matchup, and then you're fighting for a belt. It's annoying. Thank you for the $2. Wish they'd done Aldo versus Cruz instead. Yeah, I think that would have been better, but I also think for Dominic Cruz, he would have just gotten KO'd. I don't like that matchup for Cruz. Aldo's fast enough to tag Cruz, and Cruz would have to beat him by decision. We know that. So I don't, and, and Cruz can't take down Aldo. I think that's a nightmare matchup, but I understand why you would want it. It's a winnable fight for Aldo. And if he does win, that actually is massive for his resume. If you actually just take into account getting another bantamweight win over like a boogeyman at bantamweight, Martinez by the hardcore fans is really respected. That would be a great win. The BAP has arrived. How are you doing, Lucas? I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well. Thank you for the 279 Canadian dollars, BAP zero. I appreciate that. The video had gone so long. I just wasn't focusing on some of the questions. I just read what he said and assumed it was right. Yeah, I know, dude. It's all, yeah, it's all good. This guy was basically just saying, all these people shitting on Benoit, man. Like he lost, and he was basically listing all the reasons that I've been like defending Benoit's loss about. And he was like, Lucas, <laughs> Lucas, you know, but whatever. Um, anyway, oh, tough cookies. Tough cookies fight has just started. Nice. Whoa. Somewhere Rogan is crying tears of of joy because these tough cookies are around to inspire his daughters. Remember when he cried because Ronda Rousey was going to be living in the same era as Joe's daughters? Did you see Ian Gary's response to Colby? I did, and it was kind of shit. It was kind of trash. Like his face just looks so submissive and childlike. I like what he said. I like the fact that he waited for more than 24 hours to respond but i don't know man he should have actually fucking said something cold to colby he should have said hey i'll like i'll fuck you up just something like that man instead he said i'll respond when it's my time and it looked like he was about to cry yeah submissive he literally looked submissive in the video i'm not even joking he looked like colby could put him in his place so i thought it was a horrible video it was too fast. He should have actually said something to make fun of Colby a little bit. Would you go to JRE? Of course I would go to JRE. You'd be a fool not to. If you had that opportunity, 100, especially for me, where I have a YouTube channel, 100%, man, without a doubt. I don't really know. I mean, I guess we would just talk MMA for the most part. But yes, JRE, I think everyone would, would accept going on that show. Unless you have like anxiety, but I don't know. Why would you? I mean, it's such a big opportunity. 
And I think that I have some really solid ideas. I don't know. I mean, I guess it would just be like an MMA style podcast. What's something that interests you besides fitness and MMA? Besides fitness and MMA? Um, well, do you just, I mean, I, there's a bunch of things, but the first thing that I can think of is I really like wildlife, man. I like wildlife. I like nature. I think that if it wasn't for me doing some kind of a entrepreneurial entertainment style of job, then I would probably just study wildlife. Sus? How's that sus, dude? It's sus to study fucking wildlife. I don't know. I, I, Back when I was a kid, I really enjoyed those David Attenborough style of videos. And I, I still enjoy looking at animals. And I just think they're fascinating. So you get, get, man, get, man. Yeah, oh, nerdy, man. You're a fucking nerdy. T you're nerdy, bro. Oh, sorry. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm interested in animals, dude. <laughs> that's, that's for women, man. No one said that, but I, I guarantee you someone's about to say that's for girls, brother. You got to be into fucking crypto, man. You got to be into crypto and football, dude. <laughs> yeah, politics. I'm interested in politics as well. I, I just don't talk about it on this channel. Um, you know what else I'd be interested in? I'd be interested in writing like some kind of a, a movie or... You know, I've I've brought this up. I brought this up. I'd be interested in like writing a script for some kind of like a, a funny style of movie. I do think I would do a good job at that because I think that I have a lot of funny ideas that I could bring to life. And I've been thinking about making like a UFC style musical slash comedy, something that's a little bit cringe, but also just so over the top. You're not funny. I mean, I think I have hilarious ideas. I might not be funny as like a stand-up comedian, but I do think I have like some really funny ass ideas, bro. That's gay, man. That's gay, dude. Damn, dude. You want to write, bro? Sorry, man. Sorry, brother. Sorry, dude. I, I mean, I guess, um, I guess, uh, I don't know, man. I, I just gotta, I don't know what the fuck I should say. What, what would, what, what would be better for me to say? I don't know, man. I just want to chill pizza and brew, dude. I just want to do pizza and brew, bro. Sorry, dude. I, I, I meant to say pizza, brew, and football, brother. <laughs> Sorry, brother. Damn, what a tough cookie win. Um, Yeah, I do, Shamil the Blob Gaziev. I do. Thank you for the two bucks. Do you support Donald Trump? Yes. Uh, I love you. Thank you, but I can't read the last part. Sorry. Um. Uh, thank you for the five bucks, Robert Weigman. Do you think Isaac Dolgarian wins tonight? I think so. Pizza and brew, man. Pizza and brew. Sorry, I'm I'm sorry for saying that. Um, I I mean, what do you want me to say, dude? I just want to join the army, brother. <laughs> listen, listen. Sorry, I don't mean to sound like fucking. Uh, what's his name? Mark Goddard. Listen, I speaking of Mark Goddard. Oh my God, speaking of Mark Goddard. I watched the entirety of Colby and Kamaru one just because I wanted to watch it back. It was a good fight. And that stoppage is actually atrocious. The, that was one of the earliest Mark Goddard stoppages ever. I actually think Colby may have survived. There was like a minute and 30 on the clock. Colby, wait, it could have been a draw. That, that fight may have actually just been a draw if Mark Goddard didn't step in. Literally just watch the stoppage again. Oh, it's so unfortunate too. It's so unfortunate because Colby was looking good up until the last two minutes. And it's credit to Usman. If Colby wanted to, he would have just cruised. He was gonna, he was cruising the fifth round. Usman did actually really put it on him. Like he actually did totally put it on him at the end. And so Usman was like imposing his will 100 percent in the last two minutes, looking for the finish. Colby like could not avoid him. I honestly think Colby could have just shot like a bunch of takedowns. I think that he should have just spammed clinching and takedowns. But either way, I still think even with him getting dropped, it was an incredibly early stoppage. And it, it does kind of make it a little bit annoying to look back on that. Do you agree with my takes? I mean, it depends on the take. I guess it, it really depends on the take. 
Um, thank you for the five bucks. I play golf every day. Well, almost every day and changed my work schedule to come in at 11 so I can golf in the mornings. Let me know what you think of this. I mean, I, if you love golf, I think that that's great, dude. If that's like one thing that you're into, then I, I, I think it's good that you're like kind of imposing your will. <laughs> you're imposing your will on your work and saying, listen, dude, if I'm going to work, I'm going to have, I'm going to work around what I need to do. So I think that's good. That's awesome. That's good. Thank you for the 279. You should buy a Bitcoin, Flukas. I should. I should. I need to stop fucking around, dude. Thank you for the 279. I appreciate that. Um, thank you for the five dollars. Do you think Isaac Dolgarian wins tonight? I didn't answer this, but yes, I do think he'll win. Isaac Dolgarian is nasty on the ground. I do think he'll actually get it done. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen, when I talk about musical, I don't mean like writing a freaking um Broadway musical like, that's totally cringe. I mean doing something that's stupid and funny, that's like over the top but dumb. That that's you know, I have some great ideas. I have some great ideas, and I I know that people would freaking love it. But it would really take a lot of money to actually make it happen, because I'd have to hire actors. And the only other alternative is doing. Uh, your ideas are horrible. No, my ideas are great. My ideas are great. I, I can run them by you right now. I'll be home. Oh, let's listen to what the tough cookie has to say. Rodriguez or Dolgarian? I'm going to go with Dolgarian. I'm picking Dolgarian by TKO or submission. <laughs> Nacy chess zone, man. Just a just a beautiful moment for women's MMA, dude. Um, did you see Marab's last tweet? I don't have Twitter, so I, I well, you got to fill me in. Do you think Aloe Vera has five round cardio? Aloe Vera? Do I think he has five round cardio? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Thank you for the two bucks. I'm not sure. Who wins? Aldo or Martinez? I'm probably gonna go with Martinez by leg kick TKO because Aldo's gonna stand right in front of him. And I just think he's going to get kicked a bunch of times. And I don't think it matters if you check his leg kicks. Such a tough cookie. It makes me want to cry. Exactly. Listen, Sean, I do have good ideas and I'll run one by you right now. And just think about this. This is, this is one of my visions. All right. It's not going to be as funny. Just me saying it out loud, but you have to picture what I'm talking about. Okay. In the buildup to an Oliveira and Islam Makhachev fight. Charles with his crew and everyone being everyone clapping for him everywhere he goes. He's the most beautiful, inspirational man ever. Everyone's like, yeah, Charles, man. And, and Charles has got tears down his eyes and he's crying and he's singing opera and all this stuff. He's got that vibe and he walks into a bar. Everyone's celebrating, everyone's celebrating. And then you hear some slam on a table in the corner of the bar. And there's Islam Makhachev and his brothers, all right, with their freaking hats low. They're smoking, they're smoking shisha. All right. And and then he's like, he's the party pooper. Islam Akshav's the party pooper. He's the only guy to disrespect Charles Oliveira in the bar. When Charles thinks, dude, what, what are you doing? Why are you trying to hold me back? That and then it and then it goes, oh, oh, stop, stop, bro, stop, bro. Oh, I'm sorry for being so cringe. Uh, and essentially they start arguing and then it, it breaks out into some fucking diss track, dude. And then and then oh and then I, I literally created a song, dude. I literally created a song. For Islam Makhachev and his brothers, or they're both saying brother, brothers, and like at the at the end of every single sentence, da na na na, brother, brother. Okay, I just think it'd be perfect. It'd be perfect. Play the song. I'm not gonna sing it. It's gonna be it's gonna be too cringy. But dude, these ideas. If I were to actually bring these to life, oh my goodness, bro, people would love that. I actually might do that. I actually might make a short movie for Oliveira and Islam if they fight again. Cringe, man. Totally cringe, dude. Uh, thank you for the two bucks. DJ smokes Pentoja on the feet. He survived Rod Tang. I don't mind that, but that was a younger DJ. Actually, that was only about a year and a half ago. And DJ is really good in the clinch. He's excellent in the clinch, which is where... He's going to be crashing into Pantoja multiple times. I, I could see him hurting him to the body and doing well on the ground. I actually don't mind that at all. That's another reason why flyweight sucks, bro. Flyweight is such a boring division right now as far as the title picture goes. Like, 
I honestly could care less about the title picture. I'm more entertained by unranked flyweight fights or unranked flyweights or guys that are not fighting for a belt, like Tatsudo Taida, Joshua Van, Steven Ursik, even him. And I'm happy that it's Ursik and not Makayev. I am. I am happy that it's Ursik and not Makayev. But still, the flyweight title picture has always been the most boring, dismal title picture in the UFC. Hey, Flukas Glaze, do you remember when you said 300 was an abomination? It was at the time. The fact, listen, <laughs> like my expectations for 300 were where they were supposed to be. And the UFC didn't live up. Everyone's talking about UFC 300 is the best card ever. It still has three WMMA fights on it and Brundage on the card. Okay. I've seen better cards. I have seen better. Okay. And let me just say this. If it is the best card in UFC history in your mind, it can only be the best card by like a, a smidge, by this much. All right. A pinch. It was supposed to be the best by this much, by a large margin. The card that I would have made, the card that I would have made for UFC 300 would shit on the one that we currently have. We wouldn't have seen Yuri versus Rakic. We would have seen Yuri versus someone that's actually dangerous, like Khalil Roundtree. We would have done Yuri and Roundtree. Then, instead of, I don't know, instead of... Um, Zhang Wei Li and Yan Zhao Nan, I would have had Sergey Pavlovich and Cyril gone. All right. That's what I would have done. Instead of Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage, let's just scrap the whole thing and let's do some other sick fight on there. Like, for example, I'm trying to think, let, let's maybe go with a little bit of Kamaru Usman versus Robert Whitaker. How about that? Usman versus Whitaker. I think that would be fine. And if not Usman versus Whitaker, then how about. Sean Strickland versus someone else. I don't know. There's a lot of other options. They could have done a lot better. And so, I, I mean, they were rolling out WMMA fight after WMMA fight after WMMA fight. I would have done Shamil the Blob Gaziev. I'm not even joking right now. I'm not even joking right now. What would you guys rather see? Would you rather see a Shamil Gaziev fight or would you rather see Zhang Wei Li versus Yan Zhao Nan? I'm actually being real right now. What would you rather watch? And be honest. I'd much rather watch The Blob. The Blob, you guys realize, if Shamil Gazia fights again, everyone's saying Shamil. If Shamil Gazia fights again, you're much more likely to listen to a 10-minute recap of his fight than a 10-minute recap of Yan Zhao Nan and Zhang Wei Li. Nobody is listening to a recap for Yan Zhao Nan and Zhang Wei Li. Even if it's a good fight, it is a good fight. This is what the recaps are going to be. Dude, Zhang Willy gets another win. She's just so good. Maybe this is who she should fight next. Let's go on to the next one. 10 minutes of whatever the next fight is. All right. Whereas if, if it's Shamil, we get laughs. We get ups and downs. He, he becomes more of a legend. I mean, it's just, he's the funniest guy in MMA. Lucas, send me Blobco merch. I'm not a part of the Blobco. You have to reach out to the Blobco. But I do recommend getting a getting a really solid Blobco shirt. Their their shirts are awesome. Thoughts on all of these dorks being excited about Jose Aldo's comeback, even though they said he was washed when Volkanovski dominated him. Yeah, the same people that say Jose Aldo's washed are going to be picking him to destroy Jonathan Martinez. And I don't think that this. I don't even think that a retired, inactive Jose Aldo is a bad fighter. Jose Aldo is actually a guy that was good at his old age. Was he as good as he was at his peak? No. But Aldo is actually one of the fighters that is able to keep it up for a long time. Aldo literally has similarities to Volk as far as athleticism and speed at an old age. So he, he wasn't washed. He still has a decent chance. But I am going to pick Jonathan Martinez to leg kick TK on. But I hope Aldo wins. Actually, I mean, he would pass up Volk potentially. So maybe not. Not on the featherweight goat list. Aldo will snap Johnny's legs like her, Chris and Silva. No way. Aldo ain't going to snap nobody's leg. Name as many cards as you can that were better than on paper than 300. Okay, sure. 299. 299. Yan Song Yudong. JDM Gilbert Burns. Sean O'Malley. Rebellus to Spain. Hell no. Well, there wasn't that many WMMA fights on 299. Okay, honestly, let's see. Uh, 
294? No, 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 295. 295. Wait, 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 wait. Are we talking overall or are we talking main card? Overall or main card? Oh, like main card, I could actually give you at least five that are better. Overall, I will admit it is one of the best cards ever. I, I personally think Moros versus Wood, Barber versus Chikugian, still better than still better than Brundage and Bo. I mean, to be honest, 300 might be up there. No, not 278. Usman and uh Leon was not the most stacked card. I might say. 298's main card is literally better. There's a there've been a lot of better main cards, I'm being honest. I think there are two women's fights on the main card and Bo Nickel, or at least one women's fight on the main card and Bo Nickel. That's a bad look. That actually is a really bad look. 217, eh, I mean that was a good one, but I think it's kind of overrated. 279. Hamza and Diaz. That was an awful card. 290. 290, yeah. I think 290 can compete with it. No, 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 not 290, not 290. Listen, I'll be honest about 300. 300 is one of the best cards ever, if not the best, but it's the best by this much. It's it's better than UFC 299 by like one fight. Literally by one fight. That's all I'm going to say. It could have been 10 times better. The UFC still should have done a much better job on it. There is no reason to put Jessica Andrade on UFC 300. When they were doing that promo, that, that classic rock song promo, they were showing it on UFC 299 in between fights. I was cringing when I was seeing Jessica Andrade, the tough cookie walking around, mean mugging. Like, dude, why is she on the card? Like, this is a joke. And then Yan Zhao Nan and Zhang Wei Li, like, fuck, bro. Like, can you give us a fucking real fight, please? Holy shit. <laughs> Like, uh, listen, I like Zhang Wei Li. I like Zhang Wei Li and I like watching her fight, but come on, there's like a million fights you can make that are better. Goodness gracious. Thank you for the 279. Tony versus the leech. How would it have played out? Oh my goodness. I think the leech would have KO'd him stiff. <laughs> that literally was my prediction. I was saying Tony was going to get folded up like a lawn chair. The leech would have KO'd him. Uh, Lucas. You would have been a, never been a tough cookie like Andrade. I am actually a tough guy. Like, you don't understand. You don't get it, man. You don't get it, dude. I'm like Rogan, dude. I'm fucking tough. I'm like Rogan. I'm like one of those guys, one of those content creators that you just know, all right, although he's a content creator, you better not get snappy in front of him because he does have a, a quick twitch dense arsenal on him. I have some dense arsenal. I, I have some dense attacks. And, and if you press me, if you press me, I might start saying, hey, 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 like Rogan back in the day in that video. No, hey, hey, no, hey, hey, hey. You don't want to fucking press me, dude. I, I'm that guy where you press me and then you realize how dense I actually am. Obviously, people look at me. I'm like, all right, I'm 5'8". There, there's nothing crazy. But once you press me, I, I'm, I'm a scary dude. I'm a scary dude to stand in front of. I'm a scary guy. Uh, there's, there's nothing quite li like this is the difference. There are some guys that are like just big dudes and all that. They're like, you know, 6'2", 240, and that's pretty cool and all that. But then there's the guys that are like, you know, then there's the ones where they have those shark eyes, those Chuck Liddell great white shark eyes. And those those guys you don't want to mess with. I'm like one of those ones, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm like one of those guys. Gross tough guy. I'm a, I am a tough guy. I am a tough guy. I've done shadow boxing and I've done a bunch of heavy bag work in my life. I'm literally a tough guy. I've thrown a bunch of punches before. All right. And I, 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 I'm all jokes aside, I'm being humble right now. I have done some training in kickboxing. I have done kickboxing for multiple years and I'm not even joking about that. So I could be in the UFC. I'm joking. I would love to train you brother. Hey, Shamil the Blob. Shout out to Shamil the Blob Gaziev. He's in the chat right now. You're going to be in my video tomorrow. You're going to be in my video. I think I gave you a 100 out of 100 blob level, which is pretty good. Cardio, I, I may have rated you at about a 65, unfortunately. I don't know if you guys are going to guess what my video is tomorrow, but it's going to be pretty epic. Uh, oh, my goodness. The Themba Grimbo part is sick. Dude, just get ready for the Themba Grimbo part. Um, 
how sad was it when the leech didn't get to show his suit? It was sad. It was very sad. And all for nothing. There was never a brawl at UFC 279. That was the most annoying part. The UFC faked the backstage brawl, the 100-person backstage brawl. They totally faked it. If you look at the footage that they showed, Dana White literally canceled the press conference to create a whole storm. And the very next day, they showed footage of the backstage brawl to try to hype up the new fights. And the footage was Nate Diaz walking around with his crew with audio from a totally different video from like a, a moment where Nate Diaz is saying, hey, fuck you, fuck, probably from the Conor McGregor buildup. They literally put Conor McGregor buildup Nate Diaz audio over this fake brawl footage. And it's just Nate Diaz walking around with his crew looking like this. But Nate Diaz is the perfect type of guy to look, to always watch his six. Nate Diaz is always watching his six because he's paranoid in general. Like they totally faked it. There was footage on Embedded of them asking Tony Ferguson what was happening. And he literally said nothing happened. And Tony is in his own world. Even if the UFC told Tony to keep it under wraps, he wouldn't be able to do it. There's footage of Tony being asked, yo, what, what, what was happening back there? And he literally said nothing, man, with a smile on his face. Literally nothing happened. They fucking faked the brawl. And I don't, I don't mind it. I think it was a good business move. I actually think that it was good. But the people that actually think that that actually happened, like Hamzat was brawling with Nate Diaz's crew. <laughs> Dude, there was nothing going on. That's not a conspiracy theorist. You're telling me if there were hundreds of people backstage, not one of them would be filming? The only footage that they had was UFC professional HD footage of Nate Diaz walking around with his pipsqueak crew <laughs> looking around like this. They weren't even throwing shit. Like just Nate Diaz walking around. With, they literally synced up fake audio. Dude, it was such a fake bullshit conspiracy, man. And it was smart. It was actually good for the UFC to do it anyway. Uh, Isaac Dolgarian versus Christian, the weight bully Rodriguez. This is a real weight bully. Hamzat kicked Holland? Yeah, but I believe that. I might believe that Hamzat and Holland got into it, but I don't believe this bullshit brawl happened. Strong low kick from Dolgarian. Big knee, but he gets taken down off of it. Isaac Dolgarian chain wrestling him to the ground, and he has him on the mat. He's in his guard. The best ground games in the world? All right, John Gooden. Maybe don't glaze so hard yet. This is like his second UFC fight. Uh, thank you for the two bucks. Who do you have between Roundtree Jr. and Vitor Petrino? Um, honestly, I wouldn't mind Vitor Petrino to take him down and fuck him up. I'd go with Vitor just because he can grapple. I think, obviously, Roundtree's the better striker, but Vitor could mix in takedowns, and he's strong enough to get them. And we know Roundtree doesn't have the best takedown defense. And he has been finished a lot on the ground. How is it when the lead? Yeah, I, I did see that. Thank you for the 10 bucks, MMA Academia. What's up, bro? I'm, I'm a new MMA content channel. Show some love. Hey, good luck on your journey. Oh, shit. Isaac Dolgarian is destroying the weight bully Christian Rodriguez. He is literally manhandling him. Oh, fuck. This is a nasty. This is a nasty way to finish a fight. Oh, he's not going to get it. Thank you for the $10, MMA Academia. Good luck on your channel. I don't, I don't know what kind of content you post. He has his back. Damn, this is a heavy pace, though, for Dolgarian. Heavy, heavy pace. Thank you for the five bucks, Lucas Tracy Glazer. Lucas Tracy MMA imposes his will against Jones with a jab. The Tracy 1-2 KOs anyone in the sight. You're bad to the bone. Good luck with the move, Goat. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I am in the process of uh, moving, guys. So... I think at the end of this week, I should be back to my normal output, normal live streaming schedule, even though I'm trying my best to keep up the, the content. But that is the reason why there will be a, a slight drop off in activity, whether that's content or just live streaming. I guess all kinds of content, but I might just do a little bit less live streaming, prioritize the videos. Um, he's got the back. He's punching him. He's got good ground and pound shots. He's, he's landed on the chin. He's trying to get him to leave that neck open. And this is good. I'm happy to see the weight bully get destroyed. 
Because Christian Rodriguez, I mean, he yeah, he is fighting in his real weight class this time, which is good, but still. He's missed weight a bunch of times. Another takedown for Dolgarian. He is totally mogging Rodriguez right now. But Rodriguez, oh shit. Oh, and he's back. Rodriguez was able to reverse the position. Yeah, this is a heavy pace. This is kind of how Raul Rosas Jr. gassed out. Oh, he's got, he's looking for the head and arm out. Oh, no, he's not going to get it. This is how Raul Rosas Jr. gassed out. So we'll see if he can keep this pace. This is a heavy pace. If he could keep this up for 15 minutes, that's going to be a really good look to grapple at this pace for 15. Good ground and pound shots. Wow, he's dominating him. He is dominating him, dude. Honestly, let's put him against Volk. Volk can get a win over a nice crafty grappler who's going to be able to build up a good resume afterwards. That win would age well. <laughs> I'm looking at a potential Volk opponent, man. If I was Volk's manager... Oh, he's going to get the sub. He passed it. He passed half guard. He's going to get the sub. Oh, no, he's not. Never mind. He's in mount. Oh, he's in mount. He's about to get the back. He's got the back. No, this is the kind of opponent you want Volk to fight next. Just a dude that's going to grapple only. That's like still green in his MMA career. This is entertaining grappling. Yeah, it is high out. It is high pace. There's some ground and pound. He's looking for submissions. This is good grappling. Yeah, he's not just laying praying. Rodriguez is up though. And he gets brought down again. But I'm really interested to see the, how the second round and the third is going to play out if he can't get the finish. Because he might be gassed at the end of this. Shamil the Blob Gaziev. Shamil the Blob Gaziev. The Marab Fluffy of Featherweight? I hope. I hope. Yeah, this is the first. Fluffy usually gets his finishes in the second. So this is a crazy first round. Not even Fluffy is this dominant always in the first. Really good first round for Dolgarian. Weight bully getting bullied? Yeah, exactly. See, this is a real weight bully, even though he didn't come in missing weight this time, but he's missed weight a bunch. Um, the Blob is here. I know. I see him in the chat. That is pretty awesome. Shout out to Shamil. I, I hope you're doing well. hope you're uh, feasting up on some KFC. It's nighttime. I know you're doing Ramadan, so that's pretty awesome, man. Just Get going, dude. I'm looking forward to uh, your next fight. Looking forward to your next fight. Maybe we can get an interview sometime. Uh, Mark Goddard stopped a fight at my school early. That is very believable. Shamil the Blob Gaziev. Welcome to the Lucas Tracy MMA Club. I'm happy that you joined. Welcome to the Lucas Tracy MMA Club. I appreciate the support, man. You didn't have to do that, dude. Did not have to do that. Mark Goddard, yeah. Again, rewatch the Colby Covington and Kamara Usman first fight. It was a brutal early stoppage. Like Colby was not in any way on the verge of being put out. Usman was landing pitter-pat shots to the side of his head. And Colby was sprawling or, or in on a double leg. It was a disgrace that he stopped it that early. Thank you for the five bucks. MMA Academia. I'm a boxing coach and I give tutorials. I also do UFC predictions and film study breakdowns. I'll check you out. I'll have to check you out. MMA Academia. Looks like Dolgarian has the takedown and Rodriguez is looking for the guillotine, but Dolgarian's out of it. He, yeah, he's out of it. They're saying Rodriguez looked tired in between rounds. Shamil the Blob Gaziev. Rodriguez was red going into his corner. That is kind of crazy. Dude, Rodriguez is on top of Dolgarian, but Dolgarian sprawls. Good work. He just stood up. Rodriguez did a really good job of getting up, but Dolgarian is so strong too to just reverse the positions. Dolgarian's just wearing on him. I'd like to see what his striking looks like. 
I like to see how his striking looks. But this is basically how Rodriguez beats guys sometimes. But you could see that uh, Dolgarian is starting to slow just a little bit. Rodriguez needs to go back to bantamweight. Honestly, he kind of does. Yeah, he doesn't look that big for featherweight at all. It looks a little bit pudgy. Dolgarian looking for the back. Yeah, he's starting to slow down a little bit. But he's just kind of ragdolling him. This is like an Andre Muniz and uh, what's his name? Iron Turtle look. Where Andre Muniz was just trying to muscle him to the ground a bunch of times. Dolgarian slowing down significantly, guys. Starting to get a little bit boring. Starting to get a little bit stinky. Wait till Dorgarian gets his hands on Izzy. Yeah. That's the fight that I'm looking forward to in the in the future. See how Dolgarian would do against a guy like Izzy. Thank you for the two bucks. I appreciate it, bro. Much respect. Thank you for the two dollars, MMA Academia. I appreciate that. Yeah, he's starting to slow down big time. Big time starting to slow down. You know, this is this is not a great round for him. This is not a great round. I think he was rushing things a little bit. And I could see Rodriguez edging out the next round. He's looking like he has more energy. His body language looks better. He's Oh, big knee. Big knee from Rodriguez. Rodriguez is looking faster twitch right now, but nice takedown for Dolgarian. But he can't really establish a lot of control outside of the clinch. He's on the back, but I think Rodriguez might get up. Dolgarian just way stronger. This is literally what a Pantoja fight looks like. In fact, this is a little bit more interesting because Pantoja will just keep the same position, but not looking so great for Dolgarian. I thought he would have finished him by now. But Rodriguez is now putting it on him. Dude, I could see Rodriguez finishing him. I'm not even joking. Jab to the body, low kick. Rodriguez. Oh, nice uppercut from Rodriguez. Nice elbow from Rodriguez. Takedown from Dolgarian. Rodriguez sprawls. Now it's getting interesting. I could see Rodriguez winning. How would Strickland versus Parisian go? I honestly think Strickland beats him. Nice shots from Dolgarian. He landed three punches there. I think Dolgarian's probably going to win the round, guys. Let's see how Christian Rodriguez does. I think Strickland literally beats Marci uh, Josh Parisian. I was about to say Marcin Deborah. They're basically the same, aren't they? They're two fat heavyweight apex guys that literally live in chambers. In, in those futuristic chambers. Thank you for the five bucks. Only reason Aldo returned was to lose to Ilya. That's why you think Aldo's coming back to fight in a division that Ilya is not even fighting in? He's literally going to be fighting a bantamweight. Has to keep his record of losing to every other featherweight champion. This is my featherweight goat. Why no fight prediction? Um, Because the fight got announced like 40 minutes ago, dude. And... Aldo's fighting at bantamweight, not featherweight. He's fighting Jonathan Martinez at bantamweight. So he's not going to return for Ilya. Do you follow Anatoly? Anatoly, is that the 1FC champion at heavyweight and middleweight? Is that that guy? Don't want to be a heavy... I don't want to be a heavyweight. I don't want to be an apex. Oh, man. You guys really would have enjoyed my apex heavyweight song. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get around to these predictions, but the next fight night, I'm doing a full card prediction. No predictions for this card. True, no official predictions, but I am predicting Tai Tuivasa to get a first round KO. The next, and well, listen, every single card from here on out, we're doing full predictions for. So I'll do a full card prediction video for the next one and the next one. The fight night after next week's fight night is actually stacked. It's, I think, in. Uh, Atlantic City in Jersey, which is pretty good. And there's going to be a crowd. Chris Weidman is on it. There's a bunch of good fights on it. I'm pretty sure that uh, what else, what other fights are on it? I'm forgetting. It's Luke A versus Buckley.
which is pretty cool. It was supposed to be Luke A versus what's his name? Sean Brady, but I'm happy Buckley stepped in because I can't stand watching Sean Brady fight. I actually hate watching Sean Brady fight. He's one of the most boring fighters in the UFC. Ian Gary responded, I know I saw it was a terrible response. It was too short. He said, oh, we're all respond on my time. And he looked like he was about to tear up. He he didn't actually make fun of him or, or say anything violent. He should have. Wow. Dogarian is pressing forward like a maniac. But Rodriguez is stuffing takedowns really well. Rodriguez is stuffing takedowns really well. Dogarian is literally trying to hug his nuts. Crotch sniffer. Damn. Oh! Oh, Dolgarian's getting mogged. He just got soccer kicked. Dolgarian is getting mogged. Okay, the clock is late. Damn, Dolgarian might get TKO'd. Oh, shit. I'm actually rooting for Rodriguez at this point. I'm rooting for the upset. Fraud check. Damn, this is a theme in Christian Rodriguez's career. Just outlasting dudes. This is like Gerald Mearshart. Damn, he's literally about the TKO Dolgarian who's quitting. Dolgarian's literally quitting. Dolgarian is literally quitting. I had a feeling this was going to happen after watching that first round. Holy crap. Fraud checker. Yeah. Beat Cameron Simon. Beat Dolgarian. Raul Rosas Jr. Christian Rodriguez might be the number one fraud checker in the UFC. Dude, Dolgarian is literally shelling up like he's fucked. If he doesn't get the finish, that's going to be bad because he has it on a silver platter right now. This is a free finish. Dude, Rodriguez, I'm honestly rooting for him here. This is crazy. I've seen enough. Rodriguez is the GOAT. He honestly is up there. And he didn't even weight bully his way through this fight. And he's fighting a much bigger guy who's supposedly the better grappler, better wrestler. Rodriguez is is literally doing better than Dolgarian did in the first round right now. Or maybe about the same. But the tide is shifting. Dude, come on, Rodriguez. Get the finish. Get the finish. Oh, he's got the neck. Oh! Oh! Oh, shit, he's going to choke him out. Oh, no, never mind, never mind, never mind. I thought he got it. I thought he had it. Dude, he's getting fucked up. This is gonna. This might literally be a 10-8 round. This literally could be a 10-8. And if he gets a 10-8, this should be a draw. If it goes to the decision, I honestly hope the judges get it right. More punches. He's got him flattened out. He's got him flattened out, guys. I honestly don't mind if Rodriguez lets him up. I think... I honestly don't mind him letting him up. What do you guys think? Should you let him up and, and strike with him a little bit? I, I think he could look for a knee or an uppercut or just something big. I think he could land a great shot. Dude, Dolgarian looks exhausted. Head trauma. Dolgarian got a 10-8 in the first. Maybe. Oh, nice jab. There we go. A minute and 30. They're on the feet. Christian Rodriguez is putting the pressure on him. He's waiting for that shot. Dolgarian's going to shoot a takedown soon. Strong low kick from Rodriguez. Rodriguez stalking him down. He's, he's, he's doing well. Oh, nice right hand from Rodriguez. Oh, he sprawled. Good work. Landed knee. There's a knee right there. Head kick. Head kick. I think he can catch him with a head kick at this point. He's not expecting it. He hasn't even thrown a single one. Nice. Got out of the way of that jab. Nice jab. Another jab. Sprawling the takedown. Dude, I think he needs to freaking go for a KO blow. He's throwing these little pitter-pat jabs on the feet. Like, he needs to go in there with a haymaker. That's his only chance. Oh, shit, he's got a Darce. He's got a Darce. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's beating him up. But he's not going to get the finish. I don't know if the first round was a 10-8, by the way. Uh, there's a bunch of people. Yeah, there's a bunch of people in there, guys. I, I see that you can hear it. <laughs> there's like 
There's like freaking three kids and two moms in the room over there. Great fight. Honestly, great fight. Great fight. Uh, are you in a commune? No, I'm not in a commune, brother. I'm not in a commune. Oh my gosh, bro. I did not expect this at all. It's like 8. Oh, it's 8.20. Dude, I guarantee you one of them might come in here, bro. <laughs> what is going on, man? What is going on? Simon Paulo. Paulo. Simon Paulo. Roid Rage on them. I can't, dude. Ah. All right. All right. Okay. Can you fucking bring him out of the room, please? <laughs> what the heck? The heck is going on, dude? No, I don't have a baby, but... This is just freaking annoying. Okay. Literally. Dude, my 100K, bro, I guarantee you one of them might try to come in here, bro. This, this, they might literally blow up the spot. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's literally like freaking four of them. Man. It's fine. It is what it is. Let's just see who wins. Let's just hope that the freaking parents can, can keep them under control. I'm in, I'm in a building. I'm in my apartment building right now, guys. I am in an office area in my apartment building. Make sure you pay the... Okay. Thank you for the two bucks. I appreciate that. There's no work going on. They're just playing in, in the room. It's the office. There's... Dude, there's literally... There's literally like a freaking playground right outside. I don't understand why they, they can't just go in there. I'm not about to freaking go in there and 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 parent people around, dude. They're not mine, so. Twenty twenty-seven. Whoa, whoa! Christian Rodriguez gets the win. Holy crap! That is kind of crazy. Thanks for the two bucks. Uh, get the kids out of your basement. This is not my basement. Bro's at Wonder Boy's store. <laughs> Wonder Boy's storage facility. Dude, I'm actually shocked that they gave that to Rodriguez. Lucas in the shine Alibaba fact. I don't even know what that is, dude. Thank you for the two bucks. I don't Alibaba. That is crazy. That's a robbery. It should have been at least a draw. 10-7? 10-7 round is nuts. 10-7 round is nuts. They gave him a 10-7? Are you kidding me? It should have been a draw, 10-8. If you give him a 10-7, then the first round has to be a 10-8 for Dolgarian. That's a sick soccer kick, though. Muzz on the kids. I'm not going to muzz on the kids. Thank you for the two euros. I appreciate that. Shout out to my team. My coach is back home. Dude, you literally did not win the fight. That actually is a little bit annoying. You did not win the fight at all, bro. Ghetto stream. Yeah, I didn't expect this. Bro, usually I'm down here at like a reasonable time, but it's like 820 and they probably just came in from playing outside. There's like a park right outside. Nice. It's official. Jose Aldo and Jonathan Martinez is 100% official. Sick. Nice. The second best featherweight of all time is making his comeback. That's awesome, dude. Second best comeback of all time. That's so dope. I'm sorry, uh, second best featherweight. You guys, the second best featherweight ever is coming back. <laughs> second best featherweight of all time. Yeah. Anyway, I do think that Christian Rodriguez should not have won that fight. That was definitely a bit of a robbery. Should have been a draw. It's a disgrace to get a 10-7 round. 10-7 didn't even drop him, didn't even hurt him badly, didn't even get that close to a finish. 10-7, are you fucking kidding me? Jesus Christ, brother. That is a horrible decision. Thank you for the two bucks. Lucas renting a space at the Neverland Ranch. I mean, they're, they're literally all running around outside. I don't know. Should I just ask them to, like, go somewhere else? This is kind of crazy. Whatever. 
I don't know. What do you guys think? Is that is that wrong? I, I do think it's a little bit. I mean, like, there's literally a, there's literally a million different places they could be, but whatever. It's fine. I just think it it is kind of annoying though. But whatever. I'm not gonna impose my will. <laughs> Stop. All right, I think I think they're I think they're uh oh but I I, I honestly I honestly might just go uh oh, fucking hell. I'm in a I'm in a pickle. I'm in a pickle. That was a dumb decision. It was it was a bad decision, it was an awful decision. Terrible decision. Um, scare them with your albinism. <laughs> scare them with your albinism. No, dude. Please go 10-7 on the children. No, no. Thank you for the two bucks. Thank you for the two bucks. Dude, they're just having a good time. They're literally running around as a bunch of kids would run around, but they're I don't understand, you know. The listen, bro. If I was a mom and I saw someone freaking doing a, a like working red going somewhere else. I don't get it. Whatever the, the key, I'm, I'm not gonna freaking battle that out with the Karen. Stand up for your, stand up for yourself. Well, I don't know. Actually, I mean, I don't know. It, it would be a little bit. I think it might be. It's not that serious. It's not that serious. I expect I expect things to calm down in a couple of minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna let them be kids, bro. Let it, dude. They're chilling. They're chilling. It's all good. I stood up and look at me now. You unprofessional clown. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. I thought I was going to have a, a nice chill stream like we usually do in this place. It's a public space, Lucas. You're entitled. New Yorker is showing. I agree. I agree that, that I'm not going to fucking complain about it. It's all good. It, it literally is a public place. The ironic thing is that there's like a playground literally like... 10 feet away um not a playground it's like an outdoors area so it's not really a playground uh thank you for the five bucks craig dolgarian had four minutes and 48 seconds of control time in the first and four minutes and 11 seconds of control time in the second and three less strikes in the second complete robbery it was a robbery it was if they gave christian rodriguez a 10-7 in the third, that means the first round, at least, at the very least, has to be a 10-8 for Dolgarian. I just don't understand how on earth they could possibly reconcile that. Like, how did they come to the conclusion that that was a 10-7 round? Are you kidding me? I've seen brutal rounds just be scored 10-8s. There was no damage being dis. I mean, there was. There was. It, it was an arguable 10-8 round. I don't mind there being a 10-8. But you just 10 7 is crazy. A 10 7 is like, you know, two or three knockdowns. Khalil Roundtree versus Eric Anders, where there was two knockdowns and just a bunch of leg kick buckling moments. That is a 10 7. That, what we just witnessed, is a 10 8 at best. And if it was a 10 8 at best, the only way, he, listen, it should have been a draw. If they scored the first round of 10 8 for Dolgarian, and the second round of 10-9, and then the third round was a 10-8, then obviously Dolgarian wins because he has a 10-8 and a 10-9. But that, that was a bad decision. That was a robbery. Yeah, total robbery. It should have been a draw or a win for Dolgarian, depending on how you score the first round for Dolgarian. It's either there are two 10-8 rounds or the second, or, or, or there's only two 10-9s for Dolgarian, but it's still a draw. Honestly, a, a, abysmal. Fire the judges, man. It's getting ridiculous. It is. It is getting ridiculous. It is. Let's see what people are saying on Instagram. Let's see if uh, anyone's reacting to it. Christian Rodriguez keeps ruining undefeated prospects. Yeah, but he lost that fight. That's the first thing. He lost that fight. Or at the very least... It should have been a draw. Yeah. That was pathetic. Sh this is pathetic. Should have been a draw or a robbery or a robbery. Yeah. If 
the third round is a 10-7 for Rodriguez. The first has to be, I'm, I'm leaving this comment on the official UFC page. The first has to be a 10-8 and the second a 10-9 for um, Dolgarian. Therefore, a draw or a win for Dolgarian. Horrible judging. Horrible judging. Horrible judging. Terrible judging. This is not my basement. This is an office area. Um, there's there's like a whole freaking office area in there. There's an office in there. There's an office area in there. It's just an office area in my building. I figured this would be a, a decent place to stream because I'm kind of cleaning out where I usually stream from. Yes, there are mothers. <laughs> Uh, no one scored 10-7. Look at the scorecards. No one scored 10-7? Someone told me they said 10-7. Okay, well, then I might delete my comment. Did no one score 10-7? If no one actually scored it, then I'm, yeah, I might have to delete my comment on uh, the UFC official page because I left a comment saying that there was something going on there. Um, Derek, the Don is a DC fan. Who are you talking about? Quick before anyone clowns you quick. What? Oh, oh, should I, should I delete it? Okay. I'll delete it. Well then it was a 10, eight for him robbery. I'm just going to say should have been a draw should have been a draw disgrace full judging. Yeah, horrible judging. Should have been a draw. Oh, shit. People are literally starting to clown me. Shit, people are starting to clown me, guys. Shut them up, slow Twitch soy boy. I'm not going to shut them up, bro. It's fine. They're going to be they're gonna be in here for like more, more than likely, I don't know, 10 minutes max. It's not that big of a deal. Um, how are you about to have a singular job watching a UFC fight and not know what the scorecard was? Casual, man. Casual, man. Because someone in the chat told me it was a 10-7. And the scorecards were weird. So I figured, yeah, it's, it's actually likely that there was some weird scorecard going on. Anyway, let, let's get on to the next one. What's next? Are the walkouts happening? Is this live? No, this is not live. Oh, wow. We're underway. Holy crap. OSP and, and Kennedy needs a trick. We were literally fighting right now. What am I doing? Sorry about that. Fight literally just started. Anyway, let's get on to it. Casual man. Casual man. I know C-Rod won round three. He did not win round two. He should not have won round two. Honestly, it should have been a loss. I think he lost round two, even though he did land some decent shots. Dude, OSP and his hairline is holding on for dear life. OSP is the most asleep fighter that I've ever seen. He looks like he does not want to be there. I've never seen OSP look like he wants to be in a fight. He's the epitome of showing up for a freaking paycheck. Kennedy's going to knock him out. One punch, one big punch from Kennedy is all it's going to take. Short hair, Nizatruku. Nice body shot from Kennedy. OSP. Throwing hammer fists. Body kick from Kennedy. Leg kick from OSP. Body kick from OSP. Jab to the body from Kennedy. Leg kick from OSP. Kennedy is just biding his time before. Oh, big right hand from Kennedy. Dude, OSP's looking so slow with his hands. Nice. That was fast. That was actually kind of crispy. Untelegraphed right hand from OSP. Nice. I should say uh, left hand because he's a southpaw. I think we're going to see a KO.
body kick from OSP. Lou, yo, Lucas, do you purposely have bad takes for interaction? No, I don't. It's just what you think is a bad take is not actually a bad take. Tell me one bad take that I have. Just bring up a bad take that I have, and I guarantee you it's not even a bad take. It's probably a good take. It's just that the majority of people that watch MMA have bad takes. I actually have good takes. <laughs> oh, gone versus Jones. Oh, okay. Outside of predictions, because people get predictions wrong. Kopilov beating Izzy? Okay, well, I do think he beats Izzy just with the eye test. Why do you guys think Izzy beats Kopilov? Because Izzy's faint and he's a fancy schmancy maestro, man. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Because Izzy can twitch and faint on him, dude. And he's KO'd big tubby Kelvin Gastelum. And he's been able to get past Derek the Bum Bumson. Oh, yep. Yeah, okay, sure. Derek Brunson. Totally similar striker. Chinny Robert Whitaker with no power whatsoever, man. Yeah, and he literally lost to him in the second fight. <laughs> you guys know I'm right. You guys know that I'm right. MVP does beat Whitaker. Oh, yeah. He flying knee KOs Robert Whitaker. Flying elbow tomahawk elbow KOs Whitaker. Or just good solid right hand where Whitaker's blitzing forward. MVP catches him with a big solid right hand. These are not bad takes. It is not a bad take to think that Roman Kopulov with insane quick twitch speed, nasty body kicks, and better boxing than Adesanya could beat Adesanya in a fight with body shots and knock him ass. Knock his ass out. It's possible. Good job from Kennedy Nezatrekwu. Nice low kick. Dude, the fact that OSP is still in there with him is kind of a joke. Nice jab from OSP. Nice little body kick from OSP. Nice. Oh, that was slick. Nice crafty little uppercut from OSP. Bembo Ganimbo is a good fighter. Oh, yeah, he's a great fighter. Damn, OSP is literally stumbling around Kennedy with these shots. The fact that Kennedy's having a close fight with OSP is kind of funny right now. Not that Nezuchuku is that good, but still. I would expect him to actually destroy him. Yeah, Izzy the conductor. Yeah, that's why they think it's a bad take. No, you don't understand. Izzy beat Marvin the Bum Vittori, man. You don't get it, dude. Izzy beat Whitaker when Whitaker fought the worst fight that he's ever fought in his entire life, dude. And Whitaker literally fell right into Izzy's trap. Facts, but... You don't get it. Izzy was able to beat Paulo Costa when he showed up with the boob. You don't get it. He lost to Yoel Romero, Jan Blahovich, Sean Strickland, Alex Pereira, and Robert Whitaker, dude. You don't get it, man. <laughs> you guys think Adesanya is so much better than he actually is. He's a good fighter. He'd give Roman Kopulov one heck of a fight. He'd give him a hell of a fight, dude. He's one hell of a tough cookie. I do. Th I'm actually serious. I do think that Roman Kopilov, I do think that he would give Adesanya a really tough fight, 100%. But I'm not convinced that he loses to Adesanya just because Adesanya has wins over Vittori and Whitaker. Like, it's a stylistic thing. Kopilov has a longer reach than Whitaker. He's much heavier-handed. He's got much better kicks. As he's not going to grapple, it's a stand-up battle against a guy that is literally a master of combat in Russia. I see guys say he dominated Yoel, gets hundreds of likes on IG, hate Izzy fans. That is, I, I, are you serious? I don't know if you're, you're joking, but have you actually seen that? Izzy fans have literally said he dominated Yoel. Or did they just mix Yoel in with a list of guys that he's dominated? Did they do the old, Izzy's dominated the likes of Vittori, Cannoneer, Yoel Romero? Did they do one of those lists? We've seen Izzy be one of the... Izzy's up there. Yeah, you'll see like a photo with Izzy, Volk, and Usman. And they'll talk about the dominance. They'll say, man, people really need to start to respect Izzy. He's dominated the likes of Yoel Romaro, Robert Whitaker. He's dominated Paulo Costa. It's like half of the fights they list were literally L's. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm not joking. He got 200 likes saying he dominated Yoel and Rob twice. Oh my gosh, bro. Dominated Rob twice is, is crazy. That's funny. That's hilarious. People got to start to seriously respect Izzy, man. Put some respect on all that he's done for the sport.
He's dominated the Yoel Romero, Jan Blahovic, Whitaker twice, big Paulo Costa, and even schooled Jared Cannonier. <laughs> I guarantee you there's some Izzy fans that have, that have talked about that Cannonier fight as if it was a domination as well. Cannonier was, Cannonier was in there with Izzy the whole time. <laughs> and Cannonier's good. Like, Izzy is a good fighter. Izzy is a good fighter, but he's just not the level that people think he's at. Man, this is honestly a really bad look for Kennedy. The fact that he's just going tit for tat with an old OSP that's not hungry at all. And I mean, this is kind of crazy to me. Kennedy has good power in his hands. He's not affected OSP at all. OSP has been KO'd many times already now. Coming off of a KO loss. Man, this is not a good look. Good shots. Now Kennedy's starting to light him up with a jab. Now he's starting to land good shots. He killed Pereira. Izzy does have good wins. I'm not going to sit here and say Adesanya is not a good fighter. What I am going to say is this. Adesanya is an overrated fighter. He's a good fighter. He has great wins, but people don't just talk about him as if he's a good fighter with great wins. People talk about him as if he's one of the most dominant champions in UFC history, which is the furthest thing from the truth. That's the only thing that I have issue with. If you want to say, man, Adesanya was a pretty good fighter, I'll be like, dude, you're right. He's a pretty good fighter. <laughs> you want to sit here and tell me he's one of the most dominant champs ever? I'm going like, I'm to I'm I'm push back a little bit on that. But was Izzy a pretty good guy? Was he pretty decent? Yes, he was a pretty decent fighter. There's no one that can deny that. The live odds are a joke. Nizuchuku lost the first. Yeah, but now he's putting it on OSP. Dude, they're having a fucking full-blown, like, freaking party out here. Jose is fighting at UFC 301. I confirmed I saw it. I love it. I love the matchup. Fun fight. UFC 301 is actually stacked. I'm not even joking. It's actually a great card. So the video that I made yesterday was more about the fact that flyweight was a bit of a joke. And I was just complaining that the flyweight division in the state that it's in is a little bit unfortunate, but... The card itself, I've not really complained about. 301 is decent. Anthony Smith, Vitor Petrino, I like the fight. Aldo, Jonathan Martinez now. I hope that they throw the blob on there and maybe some other heavyweights. You got a flyweight title fight, which might be a stink fest, but hey, at least it's something. And then you have some other good ones. There's some other good fights on there. Elvis Brenner, he's on there too. There's some other great fights on the prelims. It's a great card. I think Paul Craig and Cal Barajo are on there. Good card overall contrarian no i'm not a contrarian it's just if no i'm actually being serious odobai yeah odobai and elvis brenner if you think that ufc 301 is a bad card right now i actually think that you're a, in a way a little bit of a casual i'm being honest if anyone looks at ufc 301 right now and does not at least say to themselves this is are pretty decent like these fights are pretty cool i like these fights then i don't really know how much you watch mma but it's probably not as much as me. Did the main event can ca get canceled? No. The main event did not get canceled. I'll read out the card. I'll read out the card. Dude, this fight's... Let's actually pay attention. Is that your cue? Is that your cue? It's Nizuchuku, brother. Adesanya. Adesanya. Welcome, everybody. It's Israel Adesanya. Anyway, guys, let's look at UFC 301. Thank you for the five bucks. Holy fuck, at this point, your anti-glazing of Izzy is the worst. Is worse than his actual glazers. How am I anti-glazing Adesanya? Thank you for the five bucks. Strike, strike. I will give you a proper rating for Izzy. Top 25 fighter to ever do it in mixed martial arts history. 25. Is it disrespectful to say that Adesanya is in the top 25 best fighters of all time? Is it disrespectful? Is that somehow a, a, a diss? Wow, dude. Lucas, you're so disrespectful. You're saying Izzy's in the top 25. Stop. Izzy's a good fighter. He was been a, he's been a decent middleweight champion. But let's not act like he's the most dominant middleweight champ or anywhere near the most dominant champion in history at all. Anyway, let's look at UFC 301.
UFC 301, Pantoja versus Ursic. Right now, we have Paul Craig, Cal Barajo. Good fight. Alexander Pantoja, Steve Ursic. The flyweight division is a joke, but as a decent fight, it's a decent fight. Anthony Smith, Vitor Petrino. Good fight. Michelle Pereira, Mac McMurdo. It's kind of just like a Michelle Pereira showcase, but, you know, it's something. Then we have Joaquim Silva. Okay, no one gives a... F Joaquim Silva and Dracar closer high up on the card. Like, th this is the type of thing that I don't understand. They'll have Elvis Brenner low on the card, but they'll have Joaquin Silva and Dracar close above it. That is actually, like, a disgrace. Elvis Brenner, Murtek Odobai, great fight. Really solid fight. Gene Silva versus the epitome of a... Gene Silva versus William Gomez is the epitome of the king of imposing his will versus an NPC. William Gomez does not impose his will at all, whereas Gene Silva is a madman when it comes to imposing his will. Then we have Joanson Brito versus Jack Shore. That's an amazing fight. That is an amazing fight. Kevin Borjas versus Alessandro Costa is a pretty good fight. There's a great card. UFC 301 is good so far, and it's not even complete. They're going to add another good fight to it. I like the card a lot. I'm really looking forward to it. Way better than the Canada card that we got with Oliveira and Benil. Remember that? That was the only good fight on that card. Mike, remember when we thought Mike Malott was like the second best fight in the card, and we now know that Mike Malott's a fraud? Damn, OSP is putting it on Kennedy. That's all I have to say, guys. Kennedy got dropped, you guys. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, guys. Let's hope that there's a finish. Honestly, I hope that OSP just puts him away now. Oh, nice left hand. There's a shootout in the desert here. OSP, there's a shootout in the desert here. Nice. Kennedy's putting it on him now. Damn, th this is a horrible look for Kennedy and his Zuchuku. We can't say fraud checked because he's been beat a bunch of times, but still. Horrible look. I'm sure everyone picked Kennedy and Zuchuku. The fact that OSP is having one of the best performances he's ever had is honestly hilarious. Low output OSP. Damn. See, the thing is, if I picked OSP to win this, if, if I picked Kennedy to win this fight, and I said that OSP had low output, people would be clowning me because I said OSP had low output, even though he does usually have super low output. This is literally one of OSP's most entertaining fights ever. That's the thing with predictions. Like, you, you can't really call people a casual if they get wrong picks. You, you honestly never know what's going to happen. Nice knee to the body. Oh, he hurt OSP to the body. Oh, he wobbled OSP with a couple of hooks. Oh, these are crispy hooks. These are not big meaty ones, but they're crispy hooks. Nice. Nice knee to the body. OSP and Kennedy are slugging. This is like a Mark andre Bauriu, chris Curtis style of fight. This is a bruiser fight. Yeah, they're they're having a dog fight. In the clinch. In the clinch. OSP is ripping to the body. This is a dog fight. Whoever wants it more, I think we might see a finish. I, I'm predicting a KO. It's I, I'm predicting a KO. And this chick who said, no, I'm not done. <laughs> That's hilarious. John Gooden. When I try so hard. Oh, nice hooks from Nezatruku. How is it that OSP, for the first time in his career, is throwing with high output and has a great chin and great cardio? This is kind of crazy. Because I was going to pick Nezatruku. I would have said Nezatruku easily. Like, there's no way slow, low output, uninspired OSP... With no more dog in him, is going to win. I'm happy I didn't do my predictions this week because I literally would have gone with Nizuchuku. This is a great performance from OSP, just based on like the grit. Oh, he's hurt. 
You can't put a cigarette paper in between these guys. John Gooden with the more with another one. Damn. OSP literally might win the fight. Let's see if there's a KO. I don't think there's gonna be. Great fight. Unbelievable, according to John Gooden. Unbelievable. Unbelievable from John Gooden. Honestly, really good fight. But the, the thing is unbelievable from John Gooden. Dude, John Gooden is a freaking A1 glazer for UFC fighters. I don't know who you guys think is a bigger glazer for the fighters. John Gooden or John Anik? I think it might be John Anik, but John Gooden's making a case tonight. Unbelievable. Actually, you know, to be fair, it was a good fight. I'm honestly surprised. I am surprised that OSP was this competitive. D1 Glazer, yeah, John Anik is a bit is a bigger Glazer. Rogan, wow. Rogan does call everyone killers and monsters. He's a killer. You know the funniest thing is Rogan calls stand-up comics killers too, which is just hilarious. <laughs> like I saw a clip of him and Kevin James talking because he posted a, a podcast with Kevin James, and I tuned into it and it was like. I, I, I stumbled on the section where he and Kevin James were talking about how all these comics were moving to Austin. And he was saying, there's all these killers in Austin. These killers, man. And Kevin James was like, whoa. And then they started talking about Marab. Apparently, Kevin James sparred Marab. And Marab was beating his ass. Didn't know he was an actor. Uh, the fight's better than this fight better be in the Hall of Fame. Okay, I don't know about that. It was a good fight. It was a good fight. I don't know about Hall of Fame. Thank you for the $2, no scope. Let's see who they're going to give it to. Hopefully OSP gets his hand raised because it would be a real sad thing for Kennedy to win such a horrible fight for him, though. That This was an embarrassing performance. Old man OSP, who's known for not wanting to fight, for the first time shows up like he's a dog. Nice. They gave the first one to Prude. As that's Tuku. I didn't know you pronounce it. Let's look. Nice. Open St. Prude gets it done. I like Kennedy. I'm a fan of Kennedy, but he did not deserve that win, bro. How are you losing to OSP? But I will give it to OSP. Like, he actually looked to have a fire lit under him. I I've not seen a performance from OSP like this in a minute. I can't even remember the last time he's fought like this, honestly. He's usually Mr. Low Output. Good win for OSP. Judges got it right. Benoit St. Abus. He's not like Abus. He gassed out because he had antibiotics in his system. Good and sleeps under the apex cage. True. Thank you for the $2.99. I, I would not be surprised if that was the truth. Gooden lives and breathes for the opportunity to glaze fighters. Nice left hand from OSP there. Great performance. OSP never fights like this, man. It is kind of shocking that out of nowhere, he just turns it up and fights like a freaking beast. I just wanted to keep on going, man. Great win for OSP, honestly. Really solid win for OSP. Great win. It was a close fight. It was a close fight. Everyone doubted. Yeah, but because if you've watched his recent fights, you would have a good reason to doubt that he was going to show up like a, a guy that actually wants to win. OSP usually just stands there looking super upset and like, I don't know, half asleep. So there's that. Thoughts on Dune 2? Dune 2 was all right. It, it just wasn't a coming of the age movie about a kid that's growing up in a time period where he needs to fight through the adversity of having friends in school and having these quirky parents. I just think Diary of the Wimpy Kid's a better movie. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, Dune 2 was amazing. It was an amazing movie. I didn't want it to end. It was like one of the best movies I've ever seen. In the beginning, I was like, damn, I don't know if this is living up to the hype. Because I went in with the expectations of this is going to be so much better than the first. It wasn't really better than the first up until like midway. And the ending, I was so happy with the ending. I'm not going to spoil it, but 
I'm really happy with the way that it ended, the middle of it. It was a sick movie. Like, it actually got me freaking hyped. Like, it just got me hyped, man. My favorite scene is the scene where he's underground with the thousands of people. I'm not going to say what happens. And then he, like, you know, has, like, a super high-energy speech. And then there was a scene where uh, he's, like, walking out over the cliff, thousands of people. Yeah. Uh, honestly, Dune, Dune was an amazing movie. I really recommend that you guys... Saying a movie is good is spoiling. It's not spoiling it. It's a great movie, though. Amazing movie. Go and check it out if you guys haven't seen it. I would never really recommend movies these days because most of them are trash, but it's really good. You spoiled that Dune 2 is good, true. Muadib! Muadib! Al Saigaib! Al Saigaib! Muadib! Al Saigaib! Al Saigaib! Watch Tune do yesterday. Yeah, yeah, same. I saw it yesterday as well. Amazing, amazing movie. Honestly, the last movie that I saw that was this good, or the last movie that I that I saw that could maybe compete with this, I don't know. Like none of the point that I want to make is I haven't seen a movie that's this good that's came out within the past like 15 years. Past 15 years, these are the best movies I've ever seen. Okay. My favorite movies of all time are much older. Braveheart and Lord of the Rings. I would say those are like my favorites, but those came out 90s and then early 2000s for Lord of the Rings. There will probably never be anything like Lord of the Rings. That I don't think that any nothing is ever going to top it. Nothing. Lord of the Rings sucks. Okay, well then you just have horrible taste in movies. Twelve Angry Men. I I love that movie. I've seen that a few times. I actually watched that. Uh, again, this winter, 12 Angry Men is an amazing movie. Godfather's a great movie too. Godfather's a great movie. Do they show the water tanks underground? The water tanks? I mean, I literally watched Dune 2 yesterday. I'm trying to think the water tanks. Uh, I don't know. I don't think they had water tanks underground. Ben, whoever said Lord of the Rings sucks. Yeah, I, I think he's probably trolling. There's no way you could watch Lord of the Rings and thinks that it sucks. 12 Angry Men is one of the best. It is amazing. Alfred Hitchcock movies are also great. I don't know. I mean, if, if you're looking for some like old school movies, uh, Psycho, amazing movie. You know what I want to watch? I want to watch The Shining again. I was watching a lot of uh, Shining conspiracy theories, stuff like that. And I was watching it last night. And I, I, I That's what I was going to do today. Didn't have enough time, but I'm going to, maybe I'm going to watch The Shining tonight after my recap video. That's an amazing movie too. I've seen it a few times already, but I'd like to see it again. Did you see The Hobbit? Yeah, I did like The Hobbit. To be honest, they kind of got progressively worse. I think that the second one was awesome. The first one was, was okay. The third one was, it was fun. Listen, The Hobbit was fun. It was fun. But it wasn't nearly as good as, as Lord of the Rings. I don't think anyone would say it is. I think the first one was probably the best. But they're still good. They're still good movies. But nothing, they could never come close. Two Girls, One Two girls one Cup is a good one. That's a classic. It's a coming of the age movie. It's a classic one too. Of course, classic one. Brokeback Mountain, Brokeback Mountain is a classic. That's a classic one too. That's a coming of the age movie. Just really solid movie too. I think everyone should see it. I'm joking. I have not seen either of those. I've not seen either of them, brother. Full Metal Jacket is okay. Wait, let me look at Full Metal Jacket. I'm, 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 I think I'm thinking of Jarhead. I think I'm... Th no, I've seen both. I've seen both. I like those movies, but they're, they're a little bit depressing. Yeah, Full Metal Jacket's all right. It's a little bit depressing, but I guess that's the point. That's the point, right? What's that one movie where they're defusing bombs? You guys know the one that I'm talking about where they're they're in Iraq and they're defusing bombs? The Menu. The Menu was a great movie. I saw that last year. That's a, that's one of the better movies that I've seen that's come out within the past 10 years. There's only like five I could bring up that are good that have come out recently. And that's one of them. I did enjoy that a lot. That was a fun one. That's Jarhead? No, that's not Jarhead. The one where they're defusing bombs. That's the Hurt Locker. Yeah, yeah, the Hurt Locker is the one where they're defusing bombs. That's, I think, my favorite modern war movie. That and then the one where Mark Wahlberg's in it. I forget the name of it, but they're uh, they're in this mountain. 
sniper. It's not American sniper. There's another one with Mark Wahlberg where they're on this mountain and they're fighting, I think, uh, people in Afghan. Lone Survivor. Yeah, Lone Survivor is the one that I'm thinking of. I think American Sniper is a little bit overrated. But Lone Survivor is a, a, a really good one. Classic. But I really recommend The Hurt Locker. That's a great one. You have to watch The Green Mile. I haven't seen it. I have not checked it out. I've never seen it. I got to see it. One Man, One Jar. One Man, One Jar is a classic one, too. I've heard of that, but I like Two Girls, One Cup. I've not seen it, dude. 69 hours. I've seen that. The Departed. I've not watched the full thing. Shaun of the Dead, I've seen. I've seen Shaun of the Dead. British movie. The Fuzz. Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz. I've seen both of them. I've seen both of them. Rambo 2. I've not, I've not seen any of the Rambo movies, actually. Brian just got wobbled. Anyway, let's let's tune back into uh, ESPN. Come on. Come on. No, he didn't just get wobbled, bro. You're trolling. The fight's not even started yet. But thank you for reminding me. Here we go. Brian Battle versus Angelusa. Great fight. Cannibal Hall. Okay, I've not seen that one. Oh my gosh. I uh I was about to make a fucking I can't even say what I was about to say, dude. Never mind. Um oh shit, my bad. I can't say it. Uh, shorts, the wishing rock 10 time, 10 all time. Yeah. Angelusa. SpongeBob movie. SpongeBob movie is a great fight. SpongeBob movie is a great fight. That's one of my favorite fights of all time. There was high output in that. There was a lot of slugging to the body. It's a really good one. It's a really good one. SpongeBob may have won the fifth round in that one. He may have edged it out. Diary of the Wimpy Kid. Diary of the Wimpy Kid is actually a good movie. I'm not even joking. Oh, oh. Let's chill out in the chat. Uh, guy, I'm lost. Guy lost to OSP. I'm still in shock. It actually is crazy that this... But to be fair, OSP actually showed up looking like a very different version of himself. That was not the washed, uninspired OSP that we're used to seeing recently. That was like prime osp legit so it, it's not the worst thing if he had lost to like a slow poke osp it would have been a little bit different still not a good look anyway here we go brian battle versus one of the most durable fighters angelusa battle rocking the blonde hair battle looking a little bit tubby a little bit flabby what's new Nice body kick from battle. Oh, he tagged Lusa with that one. Oh, we heard him. He rocked. Oh, nice knee to the body. Oh, and another one too. And a nice body kick from battle. And another body kick from battle. Angelusa slugging. And he's shooting a takedown. Battle sprawls it. Nice knee to the body from battle. Here we go. I don't know why the connection is so blurry on my phone. They're clinching. Oh, now it's HD again. Nice takedown from battle. Nice. He's in mount. Nope. Yep. He's in mount. He's in mount. Oh, Angelusa reverses the position. It's a heavy pace. Brian Battle looking for a knee. Looking for a knee. Nice knee to the body. This is a good fight so far. Great fight. High action. Lots of output. They're saying battle looks giant. He does not look that giant in this weight class, dude. Angelusa is not like a very tall guy. I could see battle making it into the top 15 at welterweight. I don't know. I could see him making it top 10. If he wins this fight, the fight would be the fight to make would be against Neil Magny. That's the fight to make. You got to really test him next. But I could see Neil Magny being battle. Beating him, just frustrating him a little bit. 
Nice knee to the body from battle. Two minutes and 58 seconds on the clock. He's taller than you? No, he's not. Brian Battle is like five foot seven, right? Angelus is like five five. Brian Battle is like five seven. So that's not even true. These guys aren't actually, dude, these are martial artists. Don't you know martial artists are like small dudes? That's the point of martial arts. It's to teach small people how to fight. Did you know Bruce Lee was a small man? <laughs> Brian Battle is, these guys are pipsqueaks. That's why they're doing martial arts, because they're nerds. I'm joking. <laughs> nice kick to the body from Battle. Little low kick from Angelusa gets checked. Lusa is looking slow. He's not good, bro. Lusa's like a, a mid-tier version of Buckley. People literally just hype him up because he's tough. He's getting his ass whooped. And it's blurry again. Nice teep to the body from battle. Yeah, I think battle... Listen, I could just kind of use the eye test. I don't think he's ever going to make it in the top five. He's a little bit too slow. He, there, he's not excellent. He's not fast. But he's going to be good enough to get to the top 15. But you could see he's just a little bit sluggish and awkward. But it doesn't matter because... Holy shit, they're right. He is way bigger than Elusa. But he's got that middleweight speed. Lusa is literally the freaking epitome of a tough out. There's nothing that he does that's exceptional. Top Yeah, he can be in the top 15. He lost to Renat, I know, yeah. He, but still, he could still make it into the top 15. But he's just a little slow, man. Oh, nice head kick getting close to the mark. Dude, Battle's throwing everything into these strikes. He's doing a bunch of gagey grunts. Nice head kick attempt there, too. Well, honestly, I, I think it would be good for him to maybe get some knees off in the clinch. I could see him landing some big knees in the clinch on this guy. He's so short compared to him, you know? Get the tie plum. That's what I would have done back in the day. when I Guys, when I was training back in the day, I would have got that tie plum on a guy like Angelusa. Short pipsqueak like Lusa, get the tie plum and just throw those knees. Back in my day, I would have been getting that tight plum clinch. Would have been going crazy with the knees in the clinch. Back in my day, man. What's a tie plum? A tie plum, dude? What do you mean? A tie plum is the freaking Muay Thai clinch where you go over, you go over your opponent, you, you, you grasp the, around their neck and you pull their neck down into your knee. Why are you watching on your phone? I, I mean, I just, I, I wanted to just, instead of, I, I mean, there's only another option. That's just, I watch on my computer and it's going to be slow. So I'd rather it be fast. Lucas is 5'3". Um, I'm 5'3 when I was maybe like, maybe eight years old. I was like 5'3 when I was eight. That's kind of crazy. It's kind of nuts that I was like only 5'3 when I was eight. But, you know, I was a short guy. I was a short kid, eight years old when I was 5'3". Now I'm a, I'm a, I'm a solid, dense 5'8". That's what I'm saying. You, you got a short little pipsqueak in front of you, man. Just freaking get the tie plum and start going away. That's what I would do if I was fighting Angelusa. I'd be getting, I'd get in front of this guy, get the tie plum, and I'd just go elbow in the clinch, knee up the middle. You got to slow things down. You got to get simple. Got to get simple. Who did you pick? I'm picking Battle to win this. But I didn't do official predictions. That's only because this week was hectic. I've been looking at places. Figuring out where I'm going to move, setting things up for my move. So next week, as usual, we'll, we'll go back to normal. I'm going to do a full card predictions video. But I would have picked Brian Battle. I would have had my Kennedy Nizatruku fight become untrue. I would have picked Kennedy to win that. But I'm picking Battle here. I think he's looking to be in control right now. Thank you for the two bucks. Can you beat... See Chandler 
she's also solidly dense at five eight. She? Who is C Chandler? Who the heck is that? Is that like a women's MMA fighter in the UFC? I think I Chelsea Chandler. I mean, obviously, if, if it's in the women's MMA, WMMA, 100%. I mean, that wouldn't be a tough fight. That would not be a tough fight, dude. You weren't that short? I'm not that short. I'm 5'8". That's not that short. It's short. Some people will be like, dude, five eight's not even short, man. That's average. No, five eight is short. Okay. Five eight is short. Anyone saying it's not is literally coping. Okay. And I'll be the first one to tell you as someone that's five eight. It is short. I, I think like average is probably like uh five ten is probably average. Five nine high five nine, five ten is average. And then tall, I would say five eight is probably pretty tall. Average is like five ten. Five eight's tall. Because the average person in some countries is like five six, so I am technically tall. I'm a lean. I'm a, I'm a tall glass. A tall glass. <laughs> uh, yeah, my bad. The clock. Sorry, guys. Average is five nine in the U.S. Five six for the world. That's crazy. That means w w where are people five six on average? Like Thailand and Indonesia and China and Peru. Asia, South America. Where else? Where else are people on average short? India? I don't know what the average height is like in India. It, damn. Boom! Solid Volkanovsky move. That's what Volk does. Honestly, that was a crafty Volk. Oh, wait. What was the thing that stopped it? Damn. They both committed a foul. Holy crap. They both committed a foul on each other. It's over. Dude, Brian Battle had the worst end of the stick. Battle literally got the, the bad end of that, and they're stopping it because Angelusa can't continue to do it a little eye poke. They didn't even give him five minutes. They did not even give this man five minutes. South Asian countries, you are considered very tall. I wouldn't say very tall. I would not say very tall. Okay. For a South Asian country, 5'8 is like six foot. All right. Or 5'8 is like 6'1. No, 5'8 is like six foot for South Asia, bro. Okay. For someone that's 5'8, it's not very tall. I'd just be like regular tall. That is crazy. He, like, I don't understand why they don't give those guys at least five minutes to recover. They, they have five minute window. They have a five minute window. Why not use it? They should not be allowed to call it out unless the timer runs out. I don't understand that at all. I, I never understand why they do that, guys. What's the point of even having a fucking timer? Like, you should want the fighters to continue. It doesn't matter if they're still hurting at the three-minute mark. You give them the full time. Give them the full time. Looking for a way out? I mean, he was not having any success. It didn't even look that bad. And also, Brian Battle got a, a nasty headbutt. He said he couldn't see that they stopped it. Yeah, but they should have waited an extra couple of minutes. He may have been able to see in a couple more minutes. They literally called it off after like a minute and a half or two minutes max. There's no way that they called it off after three or four. It was like two minutes max. Terrible. Battle was beating the shit out of him. True. True. UFC and doctors are the worst. Yeah. Have you done predictions for this card? Yes, I, I did. I, I, I did predict that there would be a foul in this round. So technically, I did get this one right. I said I had a feeling that Angelus was going to get eye poked. I said, Brian Battle tends to dip his head off the side, off the center line. He tends to go low with his head. And I do think coming off after the headbutt, he will land a little crafty eye poke. And I said, there's a chance, there's a chance that they will end the fight. <laughs> I'm glad I did not do predictions for this card because I would have gotten that one wrong even because that wouldn't have been a win for me. It would have just been a, okay, let's discard this completely. It doesn't count. And then my Kennedy Nizatruku pick would have been wrong too. Yeah, Brian Battle. Brian Battle's going off on him. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. There we go.
He's right. He's right. He's right to say that. Angelusa pussied out. Yeah, let's go. Let's run that back. Run it back next week, dude. Screw Angelusa, dude. That guy pussied out. 100%. Honestly, pathetic. The fact that Angelusa was talking shit in the cage after he literally pipsqueaked his way out of that one, scurried away. He literally scurried away. The doctor should have forced him to wait five minutes. That's what they should do. Even if you can't see, they should say, hey, hey, we're going to give you three minutes anyway. Three minutes. Come on, man. It's a joke. Oh, my good. Oh, I can't see. Oh, stop. Shut the bullshit. You think Stipe Miocic is doing that in the title fight? You think a guy like Stipe is pussying out because he can't see? Dude, people have fought through that. Like, that's just a lack of having heart. I'm going to be honest. Like, there are fighters that would literally either say, give me more time or just fight through it. I, I, Steve A. Miocic fought DC in the rematch and won due to, with eye pokes. Not with eye pokes, but like he had gotten eye poked a bunch. People can win fights after they get eye poked. Sean Strickland beat Abu Smagomedov after getting brutally eye poked. And that was a way worse eye poke that he took against Abu. And he still won. Yeah, he, he wanted a way out 100%. Scurried away. Yeah, scurried away. Exactly. Like the ratty is true. Listen, I, I I don't think that Angulus is like a. I'm not gonna call him a rap, but in general, I mean, it, it was a, it was a moment where he clearly wanted out. Clearly wanted out. Very weak, yeah. And battle got headbutted too. I, you know, I literally thought that they called the timeout due to the headbutt at first. I was like, oh shit, it's a headbutt. And I, then I see Angulus is the one that's scurrying back to the corner. Oh my gosh, dude. That's crazy. Hold up. Hold up. No, no. That's not what it is, bro. He just freaking ruined a fight where it could have been a good win for Brian Battle. Thank you, Rob. It's clear as day. He hates him and he wants it. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I don't dislike Izzy. I don't, I don't know. Oh, I do kind of dislike him, but I'm not as much of a hater of Izzy as you think. I just think that his fans overrate him. Battle stock goes up. Yeah, his stock goes up. Lucas is 169 meters. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a, a centimeters dude. You got to give me what it is in feet. Uh, Lusa was bitching so hard. True. Battle just won the people. Yeah, true. He won the people over. I'm dropping five plus film studies for 300. Be ready. Good. Get them out sooner rather than later. Lucas is delusional. Is he a hater who thinks Copula beats him? Why? Let me ask you this. Why do you think Izzy beats Roman Kopilov and give me what he would do? What would he do to Kopilov? What would Izzy do to Kopilov? How does Izzy beat him? Like, not, not just the, the method, but like, how does he end up getting it done? Bad defense? Bad defense. No, he does not. It's not a bad defense. He got cracked once by Claudio Ribeiro when Ribeiro was running forward. Izzy doesn't run forward at people. Izzy's the counter striker that like holds his ground or stands on the back foot. Ribeiro tagged him running at him and he tagged him for one second like he was not rocked. Izzy does not run at people and have any kind of blitzing power. Izzy's a guy that, that holds back, chips away on the outside, throws a bunch of kicks like... Roman Kopilov has better kicks objectively than Adesanya. I don't care what anyone says. Objectively has better kicks. Better body shots, better boxing. That's the way that I look at it. Who's the better boxer? Who has better hands? Kopilov. Who has more dynamic and powerful kicks? Kopilov. Who has the experience? Izzy. Fair enough. But I go with the guy that has better kicks and better hands and is a better striker. So, Also, clinch game. Izzy doesn't have a clinch game. So yes, you're right. I would guy I would go with the guy that has better kicks in boxing in a basically kickboxing fight in MMA. 100%. Stop, man. I don't know, dude. Izzy's got those hands, brother. Sure, sure. He's got those hands. That's why he was totally able to annihilate Jared Cannonier and uh Marvin Vittori and he definitely got the better Strickland. <laughs> He's eating those feints. Yeah, yeah. That's why that's why they pick Izzy. Yeah, I just don't think he would handle his little faint game, Twinkle Toes game. Augusta Sakai on everyone's highlight reel. True. Let's see it. Let's see Augusta Sakai on both of these guys' highlight reel. Dude, 
these people are still out here. Aldo's back, I see. I'm really hyped about it. I do think that he'll probably lose, but it's a good fight for him to take. How's he going to do with the leg kicks? I think he gets TKO'd personally. I personally think he gets TKO'd. Uh, man, you got you to gotta like Marcin Tubbyman Tabora. You really do. You got to understand that Marcin Tubbyman's here to, he's here to eat. He's here to win. He's here to fight. You know that they put Tubby Man in front of a green screen for these clips. He's never left the apex. Tai Tuivasa is a real life fighter, though. That's why Tai Tuivasa, you see, with, with all these different haircuts. The apex did just get a new barber, though. The apex did get a new barber. And all the heavyweights were really happy about that. It's like, you know, in prison, the, the prisoners will get happy when there's like a, you know, something new going on. Like, dude, we get to watch, we get to watch the game today. That's awesome. For the Apex heavyweights, they get hyped when there's a barber. They get to have like a little bit of a personality with their haircuts. That's what uh, Marcin Tubby Mantabor is doing. He's trying to rebel. He's a little bit rebellious, man. I give him credit for that. He's trying to fight for his freedom, guys. Tubby Man, will he get his freedom tonight? Beating a non-NPC for the first time in his life. Marcin Tabora. No way a trained barber gave him that cut. That I was an apex barber, an AI barber. It was an AI barber. What you know about prison? I'm just saying. I could imagine that's what it's like being a heavyweight at the apex. It's like, it's the little things in life that, that get them hyped up at that point. Apex robots, exactly. I'm hyped. It's been a minute since Ty has fought at the apex. I think the last guy he fought was... Villanueva or something like that. It was another fat Apex heavyweight. That's the last guy who fought at the Apex. Like an actual NPC. It's been a minute. Marcin is a horrible cut. I know. It's pretty pretty terrible. Tai Tuivasa coming in with a, a man bun this time. Izzy is the worst boxer in the top five. Oh, 100%. He was literally getting outboxed by Vittori. Literally. Izzy was landing singular shots whenever anyone would combine strikes together. And land them, it was Vittori landing combinations. Izzy's famous slip, slip a bunch of shots moment was him just getting hit by like three of Vittori's punches. Oh shit. Is this Tabora? This is like a li literal random selection on UFC 5, a created character walkout song. Yeah, it's Tubby Man Tabora. I know it's not a, a random song in general, but it's just walking out to TJ Dillashaw. He selected TJ Dillashaw walkout song for his UFC moment. <laughs> they just selected random. Here he comes. Tubby man. <laughs> With the battery pack. They just popped the battery in his back. Nice. Look, he literally, he literally walking around with no expression on his face. No expression on his face. NPC walkout. <laughs> Remember to start the clock? I know. Oh, sh crap. Yeah, let, let's actually just run the clock out right now before the fight actually starts. I can see him KO Chinny. Tai Tuivasa's not getting KO'd by Marcin Tabora, brother. Tabora's way to win is to survive and get a takedown. There's no way he's knocking out Tai. He's probably getting chinned in the first. This is going to be a levels fight. You want a fade or a bald cut, Marcin Tabora? Both. Yep, exactly. Here comes Tubby, man. It was 700 people in the chat. That's crazy. Tabora trying to make it at the Apex Factory with this one. Exactly. That is the deal. That is the deal. The UFC offers you a comfortable living situation with enough batteries to keep you alive, good food, of course, and decent um, conditions. Like They always make sure that even though you're, you're in that pod for at least 11 months out of the year, when you hop out, you're in good condition. You are selling your soul to the UFC. You are. But at the same time, Tubby Man is getting a good deal, and there's always an opportunity for him to fight for his freedom. And this is it. If he beats Tai Tuivasa, who is a real fighter, he will get his freedom. He'll be able to go back to Poland, <laughs> even though he was created in the Apex. But they created him as a Polish fat heavyweight, right? So, I mean, essentially going back to Poland just means like he'll go to where he was created to go to if he wins. But we'll see. Here comes Ty with his real walkout music. Is he walking up to like 
Sunshine. I thought this was going to be the Sunshine song from the 2000s. So much, I don't even know how that one goes. Like something Sunshine. Pocket full of sunshine. That's the one that I'm thinking of. No, it's just a Tai to Ivasa song. I don't even know who sings that one. Oh, he literally is walking out to the same artist. Tai to Ivasa with his bubblegum pop. See, that's a real heavyweight right there. Natasha Bedingfield. Okay. Good, good, good catch. I wouldn't have known that at all. Wow, here comes Ty with his freaking bubblegum pop. Ty Tuivas is going to get the KO. Guarantee it. First round KO over Tubby Man. Marcin is actually in much better shape than Ty, but at the same time, you know, he's still a heavyweight at the Apex. <laughs> Marcin Tabora is standing there menacingly in the cage. No expression on his face. Ty about to get hurt. He's not going to get hurt by Marcin, brother. There's no way he's going to get hurt by Marcin. Marcin doesn't hurt guys. He TKOs people on the ground. He, he, he literally hits the off button on these guys. When Marcin wins, it's it's automated NPC fights. This is a real fight. This is a real one. It's going to be Marcin Tabora's programmed fighting style versus the banger from Western Sydney. Apex has no aura. I'm tired of it. Same. It, it, it is actually getting very old. It's been old for years now. Taitui Vasa could have been put on a freaking main card of a pay-per-view, dude. He could have been on UFC 301. But no, we, we get him on the Apex. Like, I've been saying this for a while. Apex events should just be like all low level, low ranked fights. And they should market it as figuring out who the next like contenders are, who the next ranked fighters are. It should be like a, a new Dana, not, not, not Dana White contender series. It should be the next step up, like unranked fights with, with like hyped up prospects, like Cameron Simon types. Christian Rodriguez, Dolgarian types. You don't need Tied to Ivas on an Apex card. Like he should be reserved for fights with crowds, like big fight nights or pay per views. Never Apex cards. Dude, Marcin Tabora is looking like a mythical creature right now. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Marcin's 40. Holy crap. I, I didn't even see that. Oh, he's 38. Oh, he's not 40. I was thinking, dude, I didn't see 40. I saw something in the 30s. Yeah, he's he looks pretty old. Actually, he looks pretty young. He's a mythical blobster. Well, Marcin's been training hard for this fight. He's been training hard. He's not as much of a blob as he was when he got out of the pod. He's been training for a few hours today to warm up, to get the gears going. Here we go, guys. The blob, too. Now, this is not the Marcin's not a blob, brother. Marcin's just a, a fat guy, slightly out of he's not actually that fat. He's in better shape than Ty. This is going to be early. I think Ty KOs him in the first, guys. I think it's going to be like a first few minute KO for Ty to Ivasa. <sighs> what are you talking about? Ty is washed to lose. Yeah, washed against actually good, dangerous heavyweights. And he's not washed yet. He's losing to like the best guys in the world, like Volkov, Gon, and Pavlovich. He's not losing to freaking Tabura, brother. Thank you for the two bucks. Lucas looking like a day a gay tennis a gay tennis coach. I'm not. I don't understand how. Thank you for the two bucks. I appreciate that. People thinking, man, Ty's been slept way too many times. I got to go to Bora with this one. Like, <laughs> like you just can't pick to Bora, brother. This is, this, is a, this is a real bad pick. It's even worse than picking Shamil the Blob. It's 10 times worse. At least Shamil the Blob was a big, massive oaf. And Jarzinho is not as good as Ty. 
Ty is like more dangerous because he's a little bit more wild than Jarzinho. Why are they wasting Ty on a non-crowd night? Yeah, I know. It's it's really silly. It is silly. I agree. Here we go. Here we go. Clean fight tied to Ivas about to get the first round KO. Marcin Deborah has like a skin, a, a, an in shape shredded dude's lower body with a fat upper body, man. It's the weirdest thing. He's got a strange looking physique. He, he has the, the freaking lower body of a middleweight, but an in shape middleweight. All right, here we go. Round one. Look, he's got like these skinny legs. They're not really skinny, but still. Strong low kick for Ty. Ty is way bigger than him. You could just see it right now. Tabura is taller, but Ty is going to land a big shot. Big hook and an elbow and another elbow and another elbow. He's going to KO Tabura. Tabura's fighting for his freedom. Tabura's trying to get in on a single leg, but Ty Tuivas has already cut him open. Big body shot from Ty. The Western Sydney banger is imposing his will. Oh, he's landing big shots. He's landing big step and elbows. Taito Ivas has no reason to fear Marcin Tabura. Marcin Tabura is looking like he's about to get sent back to the apex pod. Strong calf kick. Head kick for Tabura grazes over the top on Tai. Oh, good shot for Tabura right there. That was a sluggy, ugly shot, but he landed it. Dude, Ty is going in with these big, wailing elbows. Strong low kick for Ty Tuivasa. Ooh, Tabura's low on a double leg, but Ty Tuivasa is going to be able to stuff it because it is just Marcin Tabura. Damn, Marcin's actually going to take him down. No, he's not going down. Ty's, Ty's back. Ties back. Good balance. Good balance from Taito Ivasa. Great balance from Taito Ivasa. But Marcin takes him down. And he's toppling over big Taito Ivasa. There's no way Tabora finishes him, though. That would be crazy if Tabora finishes him. Ty's getting back up to his feet. But you, oh, dude, Marcin Tabora might actually earn his freedom tonight. What is Ty doing swinging these silly elbows? Like, why doesn't he throw punches? Is he that overly confident? He's like going in there like he's MVP. Damn, Marcin's taking his back. Wow, Marcin's literally taking his back. Bro, I'm so happy I didn't predict this card. <laughs> this would have been the worst card to predict. Like who the heck would pick Tubby Man? Dude, Tubby Man literally might get his first non-NPC win. Damn, he's whooping him up. He's whooping him up. He is whooping him up. These are heavyweight shots. These are heavyweight shots. These are this is this is what he was programmed to do. He's fighting for his freedom. This is a man that's imposing his will. He's gaining a consciousness. Tabora's gaining a consciousness. Tabora's gaining a consciousness. Wow. Big shelling. Remember when John Gooden said that when Aspinall KO'd Tabora? Big shelling. Big shelling. Thank you for the two bucks. Told you Ty about to get TKO'd. Yeah, but it's not because he's washed. It's just because he has bad grappling. People were making it sound like Ty was chin. His chin was gone. Dude, Tabora is eating this man alive. Dude, he might TKO him. There's still a minute and 45 on the clock. Ty's got to get up. The ref better not stop it, though. The ref better not stop it. Oh, no. He might get choked out. Oh, he's going to tap. He's going to tap. He's going to tap. Oh, he's going to go to sleep. Oh, my goodness. Tubby man might get his freedom. No, he's not going to go out. Ty is, 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 is toughing it out. Ty is toughing it out. Ty is toughing it out. Ty is toughing it out. You could see him. You could see him. He's toughing it. Oh, he's smiling. Ty's smiling. He's smiling. He's good. He's good. <laughs> Ty is smiling. He's ready to go. Ty doesn't want to get sent to the apex. Dude, this is this is fortitude. This is grit. Oh! Oh! 
Marcin Tabora earns his freedom against Taito Ivasa. Holy crap. Whoa. Marcin Tabora earns his freedom. He's done. He's done with the Apex. Holy crap. He's literally a real person now. Holy shit. That is crazy. Just like that. Freedom. That makes it, honestly, I might want to shed a tear. That's crazy. Freedom. Freedom. Honestly, that's that's amazing. I don't even know how that fight ended. I didn't look like Taichi Vasa tapped. Marcin Tabora is no longer confined to the apex. The UFC is going to grant him his freedom tonight. He is leaving for the first time. In history, we see one of these Apex heavyweights break out. Marcin Tabora is the first one to be able to do it. He has just gained a conscience. He is no longer automated. No more need for a battery pack. Look at, oh, look at the smile. Look at the smile. That's a man that's just earned his life. Tied to Ivasa, man. Unfortunate for Tied to Ivasa. It is going to get rough for him, but... Marcin Tabora, I'm happy for the guy. I'm very happy for the guy. He gets it done. Damn, Marcin Tabora chokes him out. I'm so happy I didn't predict this card, guys, because this would have been a, a catastrophe if I were to predict it. I would have picked Battle. I would have picked Kennedy Nizitruku. I would have picked Dolgarian. I would have picked freaking Tubbyman Tabora to get his ass kicked in the first and get KO'd. But the fact that he actually earned his freedom was nuts. Beautiful. How could you hate the sport? How could you hate the sport? Anyone that's hating on this or sad, you're an evil person. You cannot be sad when a man earns his freedom. I'm joking. It is kind of sad that Taito Ibasa lost. And I'm not joking about Marcin Tabora. You cannot call... All right, I'm being honest. I never want to hear anyone call Marcin Tabora an NPC Apex heavyweight ever again. He's real. He's going to Poland. He's getting shipped off to Poland where he belongs. That's what he was. He was made as one of the Polish fighters, but he's going po He's going to Poland. I'm going to interview him. I'm actually going to interview him. Should I, should I hit him up and ask him how it felt to like earn his, <laughs> earn his freedom? <laughs> dude, I got to interview him, dude. I got to ask him. He's going to be like, what? What are you talking about? What do you mean? What do you mean I earned? I'm just saying it must have been really... I, I'm going to ask him... It must have been a really freeing feeling to actually get past a big name like Taito Ivasa. Did it feel like it was a weight taken off of your shoulders? And they'll be like, yeah, yeah, it was very freeing. <laughs> Dude, he can't even talk. He's like so astounded. He is shocked that he just beat Taito Ivasa. This is amazing. Ty is the gatekeeper for the Apex? No, no, that's not how it worked. You, 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 can't, you can't turn into an Apex. <laughs> <laughs> dude that's funny like now tai to is going to be forced to to spend his time at the apex nah tai to is not an npc he, he fought he fought like he was imposing his will like a madman okay i give you the 20 bucks lloyd dude marcin taboro freaking went at him like a freaking beast imposed his will like a monster man that's how you know he's a real person. Yeah, NPC no longer. He literally imposed his will. That is a will of a human being. That's a man right there. That's a, that's a man. We got to respect him as a freaking man right now. All right? That's a real person. You cannot, you can't fight like that unless you're real. Marcin Debora cannot even believe what he just did. He's just really happy right now. Thank you for the 20 and okay. Just give time. <laughs> I can't, dude, this was literally the flukiest card ever. Like every single pick I would have had wrong on the main card. And I wouldn't have predicted the WMMA fight. I literally would have gotten every single pick wrong. So I feel for all the other MMA content creators. The one week where I'm focusing on moving and like, you know, fortunately for me, the card was weak. So I, I just didn't get out around to this. I, I, I dodge a bullet. Who does he want to face? Who does he want to face? He, he wants to prove everyone wrong. That's He didn't prepare a name because he's not thinking. He's thinking about his freedom, Bisbing. Don't ask him about who he wants next. This man just earned his, his freedom. He just want, he's happy to prove people wrong. Thank you for the two bucks. Nuke. 
from a poll. I'm very happy you're wrong. Let's go, Tubby. Shout out to Tubby. I'm never, ever... You know what? Don't call him Tubby. Don't ever call him Tubby. He's he's earned all of my respect. He's earned everyone's respect not to be an NPC. Dude, Bisbing's asking this guy who he wants next. You, like... I might even make a whole video ranting about Bisbing. I might expose Bisbing for asking such a, a an immature question when the gravity of the situation is this guy just fought freaking tooth and nail to get out of the freaking apex. Like you're asking him who he wants next. Like, can you just let the guy enjoy his moment? You kidding me? Come on. This is not a regular interview. Thank you for the five bucks. Losing streak is three. It's like the 35 curse. It's hard to come back. Yeah, now it's four. It's hard to come back on a three fight loss streak. I could still see I could still see him beating a bunch of NPC heavyweights, but not that one because that wasn't one. We found out Tabora went into the cage and he wasn't an NPC. All right, he did not beat Tabora, but Tabora is no longer an NPC. There you go. I could see him beating a bunch of NPCs though. I'm late. How did OSP win? OSP fought the best he's ever fought. I'm not even joking. Like OSP fought with high output, grittiness, like a dog. Like he actually really wanted it. So OSP just won because he had the best performance ever. Shit, dude. This is a crazy fight night. Honestly, beautiful fight night. Marcin Tabora earns his freedom. And what am I about to do right now? Well, I'm probably going to get going and film my video, guys. So I will be back. I will be back. All right. But I'm going to get going to film my video. See you guys soon. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, shout out to Marcin Deborah.